previously on Ravenswood. Hi guys, it's Lauren Daisy. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a deep dive into Ravenswood. Yes, the Pretty Little Liars spooky spin-off. This is gonna be like a proper deep dive. I feel like Deep dives are just my bread and butter, and I feel like I haven't done a proper like long one in so long. So, you know, get your hot chocolates, get your cozy vibes, and just come and sit with me while we talk about this today. We're gonna be talking all about Ravenswood. We're gonna be doing a deep dive into like the actual town, the location, what it means in Pretty Little Lies when we first meet people from Ravenswood when they first go there in the original, the main show. Then obviously we're going to go into the spin-off. We're going to go through every single episode. There are 10 in total. Go through everything that happens. We're going, I'm, I tell you, we're going full on deep dive today. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on Ravenswood. And then we're going to talk about when Caleb came back from Ravenswood and its cancellation. So we've got a lot to get through today. So let's just get started. So our introduction to Ravenswood comes in season four of Pretty Little Liars and is the sixth episode called Under the Gun. And immediately there is a shift in the tone of Ravenswood compared to Rosewood. So when they go to Ravenswood, it's Spencer and Toby that actually go for the first time. There's like cut scenes to ravens and everything gets more gray and the tone is very like twilight like that kind of vibe the whole coloring of the show switches and the music switches and i actually really like it i think it's really fun i think that's like a fun little twist and that also does carry over into Ravenswood the show um so I thought that that was kind of fun as well so Ravenswood is also in Pennsylvania where Rosewood is and it's about 20 miles away between Brookhaven and Ravenswood um maybe I'll do a whole video on Brookhaven that would be like a little bit of a short one because they don't go there that much um but those are kind of the big three locations I would say that we see in the show that and also like Philadelphia it has a population of 7,493 so it is slightly less than Rosewood but actually not that much less um considering how much smaller Ravenswood feels in the show but then when you actually watch it like the actual Ravenswood show I feel like you see way more of it like in Pretty Little Lies they only show you a real small part but then in Ravenswood it feels a lot more established I feel like in Pretty Little Lies they're really trying to set the tone that this place is really creepy like nobody speaks to them and everyone's very eerie and um old-fashioned and it's not really like that at all when you actually get into the spin-off it's a lot more like rosewood so as spencer and toby are driving in we see the ravenswood sign and it says it's so named for the vast wooded area to the east and frequent raven sightings ravenswood first rose to prominence during the revolutionary war for its use as a rest station and later as a burial ground so that's kind of a big theme in Ravenswood is that it's kind of plagued by death. That's a big theme that runs all throughout the spin-off. Um, it's basically the whole core of the spin-off is the cemetery and the kind of supernatural element. Um, and I know that that's quite a divisive thing amongst Pretty Little Liars fans because I felt that as well. I love supernatural stuff and I love shows like that, but for me, that's not what I'm looking for from Pretty Little Liars. So when we had the Ravenswood episodes, I was like, oh, this is kind of fun, but I don't really need supernatural elements brought in to this show, especially so late in the show. If you've established it from the beginning, we kind of understand there's always that kind of element to it, then fair enough. But the fact that we get all the way to season four and they want to start introducing like ghosts, I wasn't huge on. Um, so I think the fact that then it shifted to its own show really helps with that because it doesn't interfere in the Pretty Little Lies universe too much. Um, but yeah, I know that's kind of a bit of a point of contention with people. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what we're dealing with here. We're dealing very much with a ghost town and not in the sense of like it's empty and derelict, 
but there is supernatural, I guess you would call it, energy everywhere. It's very spooky, it's very eerie. That's kind of how they want you to feel when you watch these episodes. So when Spencer and Toby arrive, they're very clearly outsiders. Like, it's so funny, and the way that everyone's dressed and the vibe, they just look so out of place. Like, they're obviously not from Ravenswood. Um, and there's like a man watching them through the blinds and this woman completely ignores them when they try and speak to her as if they didn't even exist. So they're looking for um, a place called Sawmill Road because they're looking for Grumwald because at this point they're still wondering what happened to Alison and Grumwald, this kind of Grumwald character seems to be a part of that so they're going to Ravenswood looking for her. Um, and they finally get to the address and they ask the gardener um, if they can speak with Miss Gromwell, but he says, you know, I only deal with the master of the house, um, and he's very kind of weird and creepy, so they decide to just leave, and after they leave, he calls someone to say that people had come looking for Gromwald. So before they kind of give up and go back to Rosewood, Toby wants to stop for something to eat, so they go back to the main high street, and when they're there, Spencer sees Gromwald um, in a salon through the window and goes in to talk to her, but she's very reluctant. She pretends that she does not know who Allison is, she doesn't know anything about this situation, but Spencer, being Spencer, does not believe her. She is not having a bar of it. Maybe you still know this person. I didn't know her alive. I certainly don't know her dead. So Toby's like, look, let's just get out of here. Um, and this kind of eerie music starts playing and all the townspeople gather around this angel statue and it seems to be a kind of thing that they do here. Um, and it's never actually explained why they do this. I think they were just trying to make it seem maybe like this town was a bit cult-like or something, I don't really know, um, but that happens, and then they also see Shana there, um, and she's in Jenna's car, and they try to follow her, but then a raven falls out of the sky and hits Spencer's car, um, and they end up losing Shana, they just, they just go home, they're like, this place is too weird, we have we have to leave. So then the next time we see Ravenswood after this is in Now You See Me, Now You Don't, which is the 12th episode of season four. And the girls receive a um, casket, like a little casket box with a Mona doll inside and this magic, like magic trick box. And when Spencer manages to open it, it's a saw inside saying that one girl is going to disappear. This leads them to believe that it's some kind of magic show that A is going to be putting on. And when they Google it, they find a magician called the Great Charlemagne and they are doing a um, magic show in Ravenswood and Spencer's like well I went to that creepy ass town before so let's go back. So they decide to go down there, they attend the magic show and the magician calls Arya up on stage and she's a bit hesitant but they say you know go, it's, Spencer's like go it's gonna be fine and while she is in the box and they aren't watching, Emily gets taken. Um, so we see a bit more of Ravenswood in this. We see the park and then we see the old sawmill. So the girls follow because they see Redcoat running. They go into the sawmill. Emily's trapped in the casket. And we have that whole scene where obviously there's Cece and Alison. And then at the end, the girls end up being led by Alison to the lair. And they think this is A's lair, but we actually find out obviously that this is Ezra's lair. So this is also in Ravenswood. So this guy's driving like a good while away. Um, I don't know why his lair was in Ravenswood. I think just to add to like the creepy vibes of it. But it seems so impractical <laughs> for it to even be there. But whatever. They find the lair there. And they also find a poster for a like party that is happening that night at the graveyard, so they decide that they are going to stay and attend this party and see if they can find Allison. I guess maybe he had the lair in Ravenswood because he had discovered Allison's connection to Grumwald, and obviously she was in Ravenswood, so maybe he thought that was where Allison was hiding out, so that's why he had his lair there, but yeah, still feels still feels like a weird choice. He could have just gone to visit for the day. He didn't have to have his whole layer there. So they bump into Gromwald again, and Gromwald apologizes for lying to Spencer and admits that she did know Alison. She says that Alison was calling her that summer because she was in danger, and ultimately Gromwald was the one to pull her out of the grave. So this is kind of the big reveal that Alison was still alive, obviously for trusting what Gromwald says, and so she warns them to just leave town, but they don't, they stay and they go to the cemetery. 
And like I said, Ravenswood in itself was eerie, but Grumwald specifically, that character, is when we first see the supernatural presence in Pretty Little Lies because she has that ability to feel things and she sees kind of like visions and when she touches people she like um, gets like a weird intuition about them and things like that and she says about her supernatural abilities and Alison was kind of hoping that she would be able to lead her to A and who was following her so that's the first time we get real like explicit mention of any kind of yes yeah, psychic abilities or supernatural forces aside from just Ravenswood being creepy as hell. So Hannah rings Caleb and tells him about this and he decides to get on the bus to Ravenswood and then the liars go and attend this party. So that's where that episode finishes and then we move in to Grave New World. <laughs> So Grave New World, episode 13, um, the Halloween special for season four, is what is referred to as a backdoor pilot, which basically means that this episode serves as a sort of pilot and introduction for Ravenswood, the eventual spin-off. So we're introduced to a few characters that are going to be in that show and the kind of general premise kind of running alongside our normal pre Liars plot. And they do this because obviously we had um, Caleb who was going to be going across to Ravenswood um, and that's a way to kind of take him out of the show that he's already in and bring him across to this new one as well as getting people that are interested in pre Liars interested in this new show um, because when Grave New World aired because the Halloween specials would air in between the season breaks. So you would have the first half of the season, so like I said, that episode 12 with the reveal of Grumwald and that being Ezra's Leia, that was the mid-season finale, and I think that would have probably finished in August time, maybe September time. Then um, in October, we get the Halloween special, and then um, the new season begins after that, I think, in like January or February kind of time. And they had scheduled for the pilot of Ravenswood to air directly after Grave New World. So obviously they're going to bring that audience um, from this episode over to hopefully that new pilot to then watch the new show. And because at that point they wouldn't have any more Pretty Little Liars until January, whereas Ravenswood would be airing every week, they could hopefully keep those people coming back while Pretty Little Liars was on break. So I have a whole video about the Pretty Little Liars Halloween episodes where I go more in depth about them and Grave New World is in that. So if you want to hear about Grave New World and the Pretty Little Liars plotline side of it, then go over to that video. But I'm just going to be focusing on the elements of Ravenswood that we get in this episode as opposed to anything to really do with the Liars and Allison. So Caleb's on the bar and there's a kind of creepy older man in the back and then a girl called Miranda gets on and sits next to him and they're kind of talking obviously they introduce themselves and they talk about how they were both foster kids and things like that and she is introduced in this scene and it's her and Caleb that are the stars of the Ravenswood spin-off so this is the first time that we actually meet her so the creep at 26 fell asleep and he has a huge bag of chips do you think we get away with stealing them well unless 60 people get on at the next stop and say we look pretty good for it and she says that she's going to Ravenswood to meet her uncle um, that, you know, her parents had died when they were younger and he's kind of the last family that she has left. And so she wants to go and meet him and hopefully kind of reconnect with him, which again is setting kind of su I guess subtly or not so subtly. It's quite obvious, but setting up the basic plot for Ravenswood and trying to get you invested in Miranda's character so that you will then be interested in her storyline once they split off to the spin-off. I do like Miranda's character. Um, I really like the actress that plays her, Nicole. Um, I'd seen her a couple things. Um, and I think she's cute, but then they also make, like, they try and make her, like, cute and quirky, I guess, and, like, kind of funny, but her stealing the crisps from 
the guy in the back of the bus is just horrifically cringe and I absolutely hate that scene. <laughs> it's just so, like they try and make it scary, but it just feels like, why would you even do that? Like, babes, you were asking for something like that to happen. Then we get introduced to another character from Ravenswood, and that is Brett. So the liars see this guy in an army suit, well, an army like uniform, an army suit, an, <laughs> an army uniform. And they think potentially he could be board shorts because they had seen um, the costume in the lair. And he's talking to a girl in a wedding dress. Aria then ends up seeing the girl fall into an open grave and helps her out. And she is called Leah. And this is kind of interesting because they introduce her like she's going to be part of the show and then she never actually ends up being in it. And Arya asks if the guy in the army uniform is the one that had pushed her in and she says no, he's her cousin, like it's absolutely fine. And then he comes out from the tent and insists to Leah that it isn't safe there and that they have to go. So then they leave and I'll talk about, yeah, I'll talk about them when we get to the Ravenswood bit, but for a back, I know that it's a backdoor pilot, so things aren't going to be exactly the same. But I feel like the backdoor pilot kind of does Ravenswood a bit of a like injustice. What is going on with my vocabulary today? Basically, I don't think that the backdoor pilot represents Ravenswood very well at all. Um, because for me, when I watched the backdoor pilot, I wasn't really interested in Ravenswood. This was the first time that I had ever seen it. Um, watching it for this video and I actually spoiler alert quite enjoyed it and I don't think that this backdoor pilot really represents it that well at all so we cut back to Caleb and Miranda and Caleb is telling her about Hannah and that he's worried about her and that's who he is going to see and he asks if her uncle knows that she's coming and she gets really defensive about it and he, you know, obviously empathises with her because he knows what it's like to not know your parents growing up and to kind of want that family connection. So in the meantime, we obviously have the scene where the liars go and they chase after Alison down into the tunnels, right, and Hannah disappears. So Caleb arrives at the graveyard, um, the cemetery, and he offers to walk Miranda to her uncle's house, but she says it'll be fine. They say that they've exchanged numbers and she pokes him on the forehead and she says that it's to ward off evil spirits. And then he's like, is that true? And she says, no, she made it up. What was that? Keeps evil spirits away. Never heard that one. I just made it up. <laughs> So we're kind of seeing that friendship start to form. They kind of have like an, I don't know if I'd call it like an instant connection, but they, I think, had good chemistry and played off of each other quite well. So I was already, I think Caleb having good chemistry with her made me more invested in her character um, because they did have these kind of nice moments, even just in this episode even though they'd only just met. So Hannah comes out into this creepy ass house and she gets locked into the, pho the phone booth. And we have these lights that approach her and then disappear, which again seems like another supernatural element. And Miranda enters through the front door. So we now know that this is her uncle's house. And we keep getting these nods that the Ravenswood spin-off is going to be predominantly supernatural because like I said, one of the big plot points is that she's here to meet her uncle and in her uncle's house, spooky shit is going down. Miranda finds Hannah and lets her out of the photo booth um, and they find a room with caskets in it and I think she explains that her uncle is like a mortician or something like that and she has a flashback to her parents funeral when she was a kid so again more kind of introduction to her and backstory into her character. Then they meet back up with Caleb and Hannah decides to take them and show them the secret door right where they'd followed Alison but the door is gone. But that's not what's important in this scene because in this, I don't really know what it is, like a, um, oh my god, what's it called? Is it like a, is it a mausoleum or is it like a, I want to say a crest, that's not what I'm trying to say, like the, you know, anyway, it's fine. And um, Miranda sees a grave with her name on it and a picture of somebody that looks exactly like her and again, 
we're feeding into that main plot of Ravenswood here. So Miranda says that she's obviously going to leave and try and go back and find her uncle. And Hannah says that she should come with them instead, but she insists that she'll, she's going to be fine. And as they're walking away, Hannah turns to Caleb and says that he should go and help Miranda um, to find her family. I love you, Hannah Mary. And he says that he loves Hannah and then he goes and meets back up with Miranda and they're walking through the graveyard and she asks him what his last name is and he says Rivers and she points to a gravestone that has his name and his picture. And now this is the last time that we ever see Ravenswood in Pretty Little Liars. We see Grumwald again in later seasons and I'm going to talk about that when we get to it. But in terms of actually coming back to the location, they never come back. We hear about it from Caleb, but that's kind of where the Ravenswood Trail stops in terms of Pre Little Liars. So the Ravenswood spin-off, I'm going to give you a tiny bit of background and then we're going to get into every single episode. I know that a lot of people haven't seen it or they did see it and they didn't like it. It just didn't really appeal to them. And that was kind of me. I don't know why. I wasn't completely against it, but for some reason I just never got around to watching it. So almost 10 years later, here I am watching it for the first time. So on March 26th, 2013, um, ABC Family announced that it would be launching a spin-off from Pretty Little Liars titled Ravenswood that would be set in Ravenswood. And I... It makes sense because obviously Pretty Little Liars was huge. It's in its fourth season um, and it's an absolute, like, cult classic. Like, people... People are obsessed now, but back in the day, like, we're watching it every single week, tweeting about it, theories, all that stuff. Like, it was a full-on Pretty Lies craze. So it makes sense that they would want to capitalise off of the popularity of this show with a spin-off. And that was Ravenswood. And I don't really know why they went with a supernatural thing. I think maybe they just wanted something very different from Pretty Liars. Um, and... It didn't really pay off, unfortunately, because we did only get 10 episodes of Ravenswood. Then on April 30th, 2013, it was announced that Tyler Blackburn was going to be carrying over his role of Caleb Rivers into Ravenswood. It's a tricky one because I really love Tyler's acting and I adore Caleb. Like, Caleb, I love him, especially in the early seasons. That's my man. But I think... It was a tricky character to pull over into another show. Um, I think I understand why they chose him because he was incredibly popular um, within, you know, the Pre Little Liars audience. He was a very likable character. And also, he was kind of easy to lift out because he was obviously not one of the main, main characters. He was love interest. And also, um, for people that haven't read the books, Caleb does not exist in the books. He's pure TV fiction. So if they did want to bring in some more book storylines or a different love interest or send Hannah down a different path, they could easily do that because Caleb was kind of their own creation anyway. So they were kind of free to do whatever they wanted with him because he didn't have to follow any kind of storyline. Um, so it did make him a little bit easier to lift out as opposed to someone like Ezra or Toby. Um, so I see why they did it, but I just think people loved Caleb and Hannah so much. However good Ravenswood was going to be, I don't think that sentence made any sense, but <laughs> I'm going to go with it. Um, it was never going to be good enough to warrant breaking up Hannah and Caleb because people adored them. They loved them. I would still say they're probably the most popular ship from the show to this day. So I think most of the audience, knowing that it was going to mean that Hannah and Caleb weren't together in Pretty Little Liars and that potentially Caleb would never return to Pretty Little Liars, for them, didn't feel worth it for this other show. And I think that's one of the downfalls. And I think because of that, People just didn't watch it and they weren't interested in it. And I think it's a shame because the show actually is really enjoyable. And I think maybe if they had just had the spin-off um, and introduced Miranda 
and then she had been in the spin-off and Caleb hadn't or maybe he was in the pilot or something and then had gone back I think maybe it would have been a bit more successful because the actual ensemble crew that they get and obviously we're going to get into them are really strong and I think really good actors and I think could have carried the show without Caleb in it um it is nice to see him in it but it definitely creates a bit some some weird things that then obviously ripple into Pretty Little Liars so it kind of depends how you feel about that. So then on May 6th of 2013 it was announced that Brett Dyer and Elizabeth Whitson would play twins on the show called Abel and Olivia um, but then it was actually later stated that Abel would be renamed to Luke and that was how his name stayed. I don't think they said his name in Grave New World um, but that is his name in the spin-off. Then on May 7th, it was announced that Merritt Patterson would join the show as Tess. Then on May 10th, it was announced that Nicole Gale Anderson would join as Miranda Collins. Then we had the announcement of Meg Foster as um, Mrs. Grumwald. Then on July 16th, we actually got an update that Merritt, who was going to be playing at Tess, would actually be replacing Elizabeth as Olivia. So now it was going to be Brett Dyer and Merritt as the two twins, Luke and Olivia. And then the rest of the recurring cast was announced as well. And filming for this show took place in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, and it started in August of 2013. And then, like I mentioned, the show debuted on October 22nd of 2013, and it aired directly after Pretty Little Liars Grave New World. One of the things that initially surprised me when I was watching Ravenswood was how many people I recognised. Um, I wasn't expecting to actually recognise that many people, but we're going to go through and I'm going to tell you um, the kind of bigger actors in this show that I think you guys would recognise. So obviously for Miranda Collins, we have Nicole Gale Anderson and she was in Beauty and the Beast. She was also in Jonas, which I think is where most people would know her from, and Mean Girls 2. Then Luke Matheson is played by Brett Dyer, who I think most people would know from Jane the Virgin. Um, and he was also in Fresh and he voiced the prince in Barbie and the Pink Shoes, which is a sleigh. Romy Beaumont is played by Brittany Oldford and she is in the Umbrella Academy, Skins, American Horror Story and quite a few others, like quite a few British shows. Olivia Matheson, like I said, is played by Merritt Patterson and she was in Radio Rebel Iconic. Um, the Royals and also she's been in a ton of Christmas movies for like Hallmark and Great American Family. Simon Beaumont, Remy's dad, is played by Henry Simmons and he was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Dylan, um, who is Olivia's boyfriend, is played by Luke Benwood and he was in Good Luck Charlie as Bo um, and I absolutely loved him in that and he was also in another Disney Channel movie called Cloud Nine. Springer is played by Brock Kelly and he's in Pitch Perfect and Days of Our Lives. Justin Brewing is um, from Grey's Anatomy and also Sweet Magnolias if you've seen that on Netflix. And lastly, the one that surprised me the most was Tess, who is Olivia's best friend, and she's played by Hayley Lou Richardson, um, who obviously is in White Lotus, Five Feet Apart, and recently on Netflix was in the rom-com Love at First Sight. Before I get into the deep dive of every single episode, I genuinely recommend that you watch Ravenswood. I genuinely do. If you don't want any spoilers, then go and watch it. It's only 10 episodes, and then come back and watch the rest of this video, and we can chat about it. Or you know, watch this video and then watch it afterwards if you think it sounds good, but I genuinely really, really enjoyed it. Um, you know, you do you, but I believe it's worth the watch. I think, I think it could have been, an, I think it could have been, it could have been something. We're gonna get into it, but I think it was, it was cut down before its time. <laughs> We're going to start off with obviously episode one, which is the pilot. And the pilot managed to pull in 2.12 million viewers. And like I said, it aired straight after Pretty Little Liars, which garnered 3.18 million viewers. So there was a drop in 1.14 million. Um, but I feel like to keep, you know, more than half of the people you know, on and watching is still pretty good. It felt so weird to see Caleb not in Rosewood. Um, I don't know, just the whole show felt very separate from Pretty Little Liars to me, which I think was a good thing. But then I think having Caleb in it kind of muddied the waters a bit more. Whereas, like I said, if they'd introduced Miranda, 
and maybe a couple other characters in Grave New World and then they had gone across to Ravenswood and, and that was it, then I think maybe it would have had more of a chance of success because I think people just compared it too much to Pril Liars and I think part of that is obviously that Caleb was in it whereas if it was like it was just completely separate and it was this spooky town but it didn't really have anything to do it didn't seep into the Pretty Little Liars plot at all then I think maybe people would have been more open-minded about it. So Miranda and Caleb go over to see Miranda's uncle Ray and he I think is played by a different actor in Ravenswood than he was very briefly in Grave New World um, and they go to speak to him and he just isn't interested in talking to them at all. Maybe this wasn't the best way to do it. Maybe she should have called first. I'm sure whoever's in this bag wouldn't mind you spending a little time with your niece. But he comes around and invites them over to the house and Mrs. Grunwald is there. She's kind of like the keeper of this house and a friend of Ray's. And she explains that she worked at a college for a while, which obviously we know from Pretty Little Liars because that is where Allison would talk to her when she was the den mother at the college. But she said that after that, uh, Ray had asked her to come back and she accepted. Then we get our first like opening credits. And to be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of the opening credits. I feel like it could have been a bit better just from like a design point of view. Um, like the theme and everything is fine, but I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't really vibe with it. I think especially because the Pretty Little Lies one is so iconic. I feel like they could have done a little bit better. So we start getting our first kind of hints at supernatural activity. Miranda's room starts shaking and we also see, you know, like kind of a gross, uh, decaying looking hand in the cemetery. So Caleb and Miranda, they go back to get pictures because they've told Ray about you know what's happening and they're confused by this whole thing and he's very reluctant to talk about it so they're like right if we go back to our headstones that had the pictures of us on it and we take pictures of them he can't deny that he's gonna have to talk to us but when they go the headstones have been replaced and different people's pictures are there and different names and Caleb is like this must be Ray like he's the only person that we told about it so he goes to the Ravenswood paper the Ravenswood Gazette to see if they have an obituary for Caleb Rivers so that he can kind of see what happened to him and get a bit more information and that's where we meet Remy um, and her dad and I love Remy. I think she's such a good character. And he asks if he can see the obituaries and her dad, who runs the paper, he says no and that they're in the basement and no one's allowed down there. But Remy actually is mad. Ed, Remy overhears this conversation and Remy goes down into um, the archives and managed to find an article um, about Caleb Rivers and his death and then brings that to Caleb. And this is in a coffee shop so it's kind of like Ravenswood's equivalent to the brew. It's kind of the standard hangout spot I suppose that we see throughout the show and that's where Remy goes to meet him and he's just left Hannah a voicemail saying that he loves her and she comes over and gives him uh, this newspaper article. She says that Ravenswood just like has an air of death about it she said that years and years ago there was you know a devastating flood um where they had to pull bodies out of trees for weeks um so the town is kind of plagued by death there is a lot of death that happens there and because of that people find it quite eerie and they don't really get many visitors but she really loves living there so while Caleb is doing this, Miranda goes to her uncle and is trying to get more information out of him. And he says that he realises giving her up, you know, when she was younger was a huge mistake. But he also feels like the damage is already done and there's no reason for them to dwell on the past. We also see a hairbrush move by itself and a ghost behind a curtain. So again, more of those supernatural elements um coming in so all of that has kind of happened to miranda so far but caleb's first supernatural encounter comes when he goes to take a bath and he is literally almost suffocated to death by this dark figure um using the shower curtain so now he is also like there is something not right about this town and specifically about this house so then we get introduced to a new family and this is Luke um, and Olivia, the twins that I had mentioned earlier. And we did see Luke in Grave New World, 
But honestly, I think his character from Grave New World is not really anything like his character in Ravenswood. And also, Leah that he's with, his cousin, never shows up in Ravenswood. Um, so, yeah, his whole introduction in Grave New World doesn't really correlate to him in the show at all, really. Um, but the way that we are introduced to them and their mother Rochelle is that um, someone has spray painted on their father's headstone saying that they think obviously Rochelle had killed him so there's like a black widow sprayed on there um, and they are we kind of introduced to the fact that a lot of people in the town think that Rochelle killed her husband and that that is then also reflecting on the kids and is kind of a big struggle for them in trying to go about their normal lives in town. We see this with a guy called Springer who's kind of like your more typical jock type and he makes a comment about Liv and him and uh, Luke start fighting and yeah there just seems to be a very tense atmosphere around this family. We have um, Liv's friend Tess um, who is kind of telling her to ignore these things as well as Liv's boyfriend Dylan. So we're getting quite a lot of new characters um, in these first few scenes with the Mathesons and I think they're all pretty good characters to be honest. Um, it does take you a little while to warm to them but like I said I do think them along with Miranda could have easily carried the series. Um, I think Caleb is like a fun element and I think his acting is good like it's not that I don't like him in it but I do think had he not been in it maybe it would have done a little bit better just because I think Pretty Little Lies fans would not have criticized it so much and they wanted him to come back to Rosewood so badly that they kind of didn't give Ravenswood a chance. We're also introduced to the fact that Remy who I mentioned earlier and Luke are dating or they have you know kind of a romance going on but it is a bit rocky at the minute because he isn't happy with how her dad is portraying his mum in the paper and making her look guilty. Liv has also been invited to do this kind of like parade like thing I'm not really sure it's like kind of an event um for I think homecoming queen or something like that like her and Tess are going um, and they're getting like dresses and everything and she asks Luke to go but he says no because of how people in the town perceive him and he also says that he doesn't believe that Tess is a genuine friend for Liv and that she just uses Liv to make her feel better about herself. So even just in this first episode we're getting a lot of different dynamics and um kind of ways that the plot can go um introduced there's lots of different things where you then start to picture where these storylines are going and oh do you think like Tess is going to betray her later down the line or these kinds of things or is she in on this um plot that the town has against the family um and even just in this first episode I was getting invested in the story Remy's dad tells her that she isn't allowed to see Luke anymore because of obviously the family's reputation um, and we also meet Remy's mum and she is suffering with survivor's guilt because she was the only one to survive an attack on the clinic that she worked at in Afghanistan. So during the parade while everyone's kind of distracted Caleb and Miranda go with Remy to the Ravenswood Gazette and they go downstairs um, to see if they can find this obituary because Remy's also intrigued she's like I want to know the tea on this situation and so they managed to find a Miranda Collins and a Caleb Rivers and they died on June 21st of 1918 so almost 100 years ago from when Ravenswood is set in I think oh, season so it's like season four of Pretty Little Liars so yeah like 2014 I believe that it's supposed to be set right so about 100 years ago and they died during a boating expedition on Alton Lake and it is said in there that they were very very close friends um, and I kind of led to believe that they were a couple and Caleb was actually found clutching um, the hand of Miranda when they found him dead in what looked like a failed but obviously heroic attempt to try to save her life. 
So cut back to the parade and Olivia is riding on Dylan's car. Like I said, it's kind of like a parade sort of thing. Um, if I think for homecoming or something like that. Um, we don't really do anything like that here in the UK in terms of like high school traditions and events and stuff. So I'm not really brushed up on what these things are, but they seem like fun. Um, and she is riding on top of the car and someone in a hood comes and throws a red drink on her to obviously make it look like blood because her family is kind of the killer family um, in the town. And Luke shows up and Luke offers to take her home and they start walking back together. And she asks him not to shut her out like he is doing to everybody else. And he's obviously very much struggling with the death of their dad and what is happening to their family. And he actually admits that the reason that he is shutting her out is because he doesn't know how to talk to her about the fact that he believes that their mum actually did kill their dad. So he has the same idea as the town, but obviously on the outside, he wants to make it look like he supports her, but he's having doubts about it on the inside. So back to the newspaper, they think they hear somebody downstairs. So they all go back upstairs and Remy explains that she'd actually seen in that same newspaper with Caleb and Miranda, a soldier that had come back from an attack and they were a sole survivor. And that is when the boat crash happened and it ended up killing five teens, obviously two of those being Miranda and Caleb. And she says there was another instance where a soldier, again, a sole survivor, just the one, came home and another five teens died in a freak accident. And she is now worried because obviously her mum has just come back, again, the sole survivor, that there's some kind of weird pattern happening and now five teens are going to die. So while Remy is driving Miranda and Caleb home, they come across Liv and Luke walking in the street and they offer them a lift and they're driving, they're about to go over this bridge and it's very stormy and Miranda sees a dark figure, the same ghost I'm pretty sure that we saw earlier in the show, sees them in the middle of the road and pulls the steering wheel away from Remy, swerves them off of the road, off of the bridge and into the water. <laughs> So now we're moving on to episode two, and this is called Death and the Maiden. And this came in at 1.10 million viewers. So pretty much almost cut in half from the first episode. And at this point, obviously, Pretty Little Lies wasn't airing anymore. They had um, taken their like mid-season break. They'd just come back for the Halloween special. So now Pretty Little Lies wasn't going to air again for another two or three months, I think. So now it was just Ravenswood airing, I think, on a Tuesday. And it just seemed like the, uh, the a lot of people that did watch it after Pretty Little Lies weren't invested enough to come back for the second episode. So we're in the hospital and Caleb, um, Remy, Liv and Luke are all fine. Um, and they're just kind of, you know, like drenched. They're all in the hospital. They're waiting to see how Miranda is. And Luke is very angry because he's like, you know, Miranda could have killed all of us. And Remy says that she doesn't understand. There was nothing in the road. Why would Miranda swerve off like that? It just doesn't make any sense. And they hear someone yelling a code blue and Caleb watches as they try to resuscitate Miranda, but they can't. And they actually pronounce her dead at 1.02 a.m. And I was shocked, okay? Because, to be honest, like, throughout this, I didn't know anything that happened in Ravenswood, really. Um, I knew that Hannah was going to be in it at some point, and I also knew, obviously, that Caleb and Miranda were in it, because that's what I saw in Grave New World. Aside from that, I had no idea about the plot. And so when she died, literally in the beginning of the second episode, I was like, this is crazy, where is this going? And Romy starts being, you know, questioned by the police because obviously she was the driver and now someone has died. And Caleb is clearly very shaken by Miranda's death, even though he'd only known her for three days, I think, at this point. Um, but he's very shaken by her death and he goes back to the house with Ray and Miss Grumwald and Miranda's body. And they kind of say that he can stay there um, until the funeral happens. And we get a, another kind of 
is this supernatural? Like, what's going on here scene when Caleb falls asleep and Miranda visits him in a dream? And she tells him that he needs the things that were in her bag, which is still in Remy's car um, at the, um, like, the junkyard or, or, like, where they keep them for evidence or something like that. So that's where it is. And she's like, you need to go back and you need to get my bag. And she also says that she didn't swerve for nothing. She saw something in the road and she actually is able to show Caleb the dark figure. They're like in the car together now, um, kind of reliving the scene. And she's able to show him exactly what she saw. I can't lie though, if I was her, I would not have swerved off of the road. I would have just mowed that gal down because she was freaky as all hell. Luke then goes to see Remy at night. He like, you know, throws little pebbles at her window to get her to come down. And they're really sweet. I liked them a lot. It was, yeah, like I said, I wasn't expecting to really get invested in the characters too much because they were brand new to me. But I became invested in them very quickly, especially Remy and Luke's relationship. Um, the way that they set it up and the way that they spoke to each other was just really sweet. And they kind of make up. They kind of like get back together if they were really broken up. I don't, I don't really know the logistics or if they were ever together, but they kiss and obviously they're not technically allowed to see each other, but they decide to see each other in secret. Back at the Collins house, Caleb um, has a book fall off um, of the table. And he picks it up and he reads the highlighted parts and the mirror begins to shake, the mirror on the vanity, and it actually bursts like and shatters all over the room. So now he is like, okay, this place is seriously freaky. I don't understand what is going on here. And Hannah um, calls, we don't see her, but they're on the phone and I think she obviously asks how Miranda was and Caleb lies and tells her that Miranda is good, that she's fine. Um, he doesn't tell her that she has actually died. And then he asks Remy to take him, um, you know, to the, wherever the car is, so that they can get Miranda's bag back. And Luke shows Olivia a letter that her dad had written to their mum. Um, and because she was the last one to see him alive, and she can't explain where she was after that, um, and this letter that kind of alludes to maybe that their relationship wasn't really in a good place, he believes that maybe she was the one that did it. Um, whereas Liv is very reluctant to believe this and just kind of pretends that she did not see it. So then we go to the school for the first time. Um, I can't remember exactly. It's not called Ravenswood High. It's got like a different name. It's like named after somebody. Um, and we kind of see that for the first time. And um, Liv actually won Homecoming Queen um, despite the stunt that was obviously pulled on her, she did win and Tess um, invites her to come and, you know, like retake her pictures, kind of like how Hannah did in season one, um, to like come in and take her big portrait so that it can go up in the school hall. And she's very reluctant to do it, but she's like, well, maybe I will. And when Tess goes to like get everything set up and ready, uh, Liv looks at her phone, like just looks over at it and sees that she has been secretly dating Springer, um, the guy that Luke had fought with and that was kind of really horrible about Liv and her family. And she says that Luke was right and that Tess isn't her friend. So like I said, um, Remy said that she would take Caleb to the car. So they go and it's actually shut, but Caleb just climbs over the fence and so does Remy. And they go and manage to find her car. And with a bit of ghosty interference, um, they end up being almost attacked by a dog and Luke is able to save them. And he and Caleb get into a fight because obviously, you know, Caleb has kind of put Remy in danger, which has upset Luke. And he says, just take Miranda's bag and just go and leave Remy alone. Olivia actually then goes and confronts Rochelle, her mum, about letter and... and what their marriage was like and she admits that their marriage was having a hard time but she won't actually say that she had an affair. We also learn towards the end of this episode that Remy sleeps sleepwalks and she is almost hit by a car so it's like severe sleepwalking she's able to like get around leave the house and all that kind of stuff. Um, so again I mean sleepwalking isn't necessarily a supernatural thing um, but they're kind of making it they kind of set it up that dreams in Ravenswood specifically 
are supernatural or that they can tell you things and show you things or that people can visit you in dreams um and Remy kind of has this ability to almost like manifest that physically through sleepwalking while she's dreaming. So to finish this episode off, um, Caleb is reading a letter that Miranda had found earlier in the pilot from her mum. And as he's reading it out loud, Miranda appears. I need you to stay really, really calm. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Do the cops know? What about your uncle? That you're back. I'm not back. I'm dead. At first, he thinks that she's still alive. He's like, oh my god, how did you manage to do that? Like, we need to, does anyone know that you're still alive? And she says, I'm not alive, Caleb. I'm dead. And I'm a ghost. Which is just absolutely mental. Because any time that I saw, like, you know, screenshots or whatever from Ravenswood, I just assumed that it was... Caleb and Miranda obviously throughout the show, which it is, but she's a ghost, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. But honestly, I was kind of living for it. She says that she can't really explain it and she doesn't know why she's still here. And Caleb apologizes for not being able to save her life. And they give us kind of like an external view. So it's like what anyone else in Ravenswood would see if they were watching this scene right now. And it's just Caleb talking to thin air. <laughs> So now we're moving on to episode three, which is called Believe. And again, the viewership went down. It is now at 1.3 million viewers, um, which I just, I'm telling you guys. And it's, it's my fault as well, because I didn't watch it. You know, I didn't support it. But we all should have supported Ravenswood because actually it, this show had potential. I was hooked. By episode three, I was hooked hooked and I was so upset that I only had like a handful of episodes left. I wish that they had done a full like 24 episode season or that they had been reviewed for maybe another season or maybe like had just done three. Like I don't think it needed loads of seasons but oh, what we could have had. What we could have had. <laughs> So it's the day of Miranda's funeral and she's kind of going everywhere with Caleb, following him around and he says that he is going to stay in Ravenswood and figure out what's happening. They're going to get through it together. And she's nervous because she's like, well, when my body goes into the ground, what is going to happen to me? Um, am I going to disappear forever? You know, I, I'm not really sure how this whole ghost world works. Um, and as her body is lowered into the grave, her ghost does disappear and Caleb can't see her anymore. Then back at the house, um, Liv and Remy and um, Luke, they have come to the funeral. There are some other people there and people are kind of bickering or making comments and Caleb gives this really sweet speech about how um, beautiful and smart Miranda was, um, which is kind of crazy because he had only known her for three days and nobody in this town really knew who she was. So like the fact that all these random people came to her funeral was weird. She was beautiful. She was the kind of person you didn't mind being stuck on a bus with half the night. <laughs> she had a wicked sense of humor. I think she watched a lot of movies. But she read books too. <laughs> Real books. Also there, the police tell Liv and Luke that they think their dad might have been having an affair with a woman called Abby. Then Miranda actually comes back. So her ghost comes back. She's like, I don't know why, um, but it was very dark in there, but now I'm able to walk around again. So it's all kind of, they get, we'll get more into the logistics of how this whole ghost thing works when they actually start to explain it in the show. But for now, She's back again, but she doesn't really know how long for. And she says that she heard Caleb's speech and that it was really lovely. Um, you really think I'm beautiful? I thought maybe you just said that earlier to pull me back. Pull me back. That's what matters. This is where they started to bother me, though, I won't lie, because we were starting to get more flirtatious-ish like there was starting to be a hint of maybe something between Miranda and Caleb, which I definitely did not like um, because at this point he was still very much dating Hannah and I just felt like it wasn't necessary. I think their friendship was very sweet um, and 
I was very happy for it to just stay a friendship and maybe she I don't know there was somebody else for her or something if you did want to because we've got that romance element with Remy and Luke um and then also Liv and Dylan so I just didn't really feel like we needed it with Caleb and Miranda especially because it changes Caleb's character and I just don't think that he would have even just slightly made like little comments like I just don't think he would have done that to Hannah so they talk about this pattern and Caleb was like I'm gonna go and see if you know Remy can tell us anything else and he goes to leave the graveyard and Miranda is intending to come with him but then she realizes she can't go past the gate and she is trapped there at the graveyard that is the only place that she's kind of well the graveyard and the Collins house is the only place that she's allowed to kind of roam as a ghost so Caleb goes by himself and Remy explains the pattern of you know the sole survivor and the five teens to Olivia and Luke but they're kind of not sure whether to believe it or not um, because obviously this time around only Miranda died so there's kind of like a glitch in the pattern um, and they're kind of a bit reluctant to buy into this kind of supernatural element. So Olivia and Luke confront Rochelle about this Abby character, right, that the police had mentioned. And she explains that Abby Wheeler was her dad, was their dad's high school girlfriend. Um, and she was trying to contact him to tell him that he was in danger, right, before his death. Um, for what he was investigating about the town of Ravenswood. So Luke just comes out with it and he's like, well, were they sleeping together? Was it an affair? And Rochelle is like, I don't know what was going on. It was impossible that he could have heard from her or was having an affair with her because Abby had died 20 years ago. So they're kind of like, what the hell is going on? And it's kind of clear. Well, I guess they weren't believing it at this time, but as the audience, it's obviously clear to us that Abby was visiting him as a ghost to warn him. And that potentially what he was investigating about Ravenswood is to do with this pattern of the soldier coming back and the five teens dying. So Liv visits a science classroom, um, well, like a science block that they have in their school that her dad had built in honor of the 1992 fire that had killed five students, including Abby. So she has been dead for a long time at this point. And her dad was actually, Liv's dad was actually the mayor so yeah he put this science block in in kind of honor of abby and the other teens that died on this day so again we've got five teens that had died in a kind of freak accident and liv ends up seeing abby like all burnt um through the classroom window which was insane like oh my gosh the special effects on this show like the budget is actually really good um and she ends up telling Luke that she saw Abby. She saw her first at their dad's grave um, at an earlier time. And then she saw her again in the classroom. And she thinks that Abby is part of the pattern, like I said, the soldier in the five teens, that Remy was talking about. And maybe their dad had discovered something about this pattern and about the way that Ravenswood worked. And that is why he was killed, to cover it up. Caleb had originally said that he was, you know, going to stay um until at the Collins house until the funeral and now that the funeral was over he didn't have anywhere to stay and Mr Collins I think Carla uh, Gromwald had kind of suggested it but he does offer Caleb his guest house to stay in um until he feels ready to leave and go back to Rosewood and we see that Hannah texts him asking him to call her because she misses him and he says that he will tonight and this is kind of that first sign that we're seeing that he is becoming more caught up in this Ravenswood stuff and kind of neglecting his relationship with Hannah back in Rosewood. And because the guest house is on the grounds, Miranda is able to go there and she talks to Caleb and says that she thinks there's another spirit stuck in the Collins house, like stuck on this plot with her, but she thinks that it's evil and that it does not have a good intentions. Caleb invites the gang over, so Liv, uh, Luke and Remy, and he even though it's going to sound crazy, explains to them that Miranda 
is a ghost. <laughs> and Liv, obviously, having seen um, the ghost of Abby, was fully on board. She was like, yep, I believe it. Absolutely. And Remy is kind of interested in this element, this supernatural element of Ravenswood anyway, so she also believes Caleb that he can see Miranda's ghost. The only one that doesn't is Luke. He's very sceptical and he is kind of like, I don't know about all this. So Olivia suggests that they do a Ouija board to try and contact Abby and see if she can tell them who had killed her father. So they do this kind of seance, you know, Ouija board thing. Abby ends up telling them that their father was killed because of the curse that is on Ravenswood and that his killer is also coming after the four of them. So the room starts shaking like how Miranda's had it before. Um, so the whole room is shaking and Miranda is kind of like, this is a bad idea, guys, but obviously she, no one is able to hear her. They ask, why is this happening? Why is there this pattern? And... Abby spells out five pact. So we know there's some kind of ancient, like years ago, a pact that was created that is then causing this pattern between the soldier and the five teens. And we see that the shaking is causing this light to come loose. And Miranda up until this point has not been able to make any kind of real contact, right? She's spoken to Caleb, but she can't touch anything. She can't move anything, nothing like that. And she gets so frightened for them and kind of harnesses her ghost power that she's able to flip the table that they're using, which kind of makes them all stand back. And that is when the light crashes and luckily it doesn't hit any of them. And this was kind of like her weird way of like leveling up her ghost abilities because I don't know if maybe once she had the energy and like whatever she needed to be able to move stuff, it kind of, I don't know, like took her to the next level because now the other three can see her as well. So um, Luke, Olivia, Caleb and Remy can all see Miranda, but no one else can. Then we cut to Mr. Collins, right, Ray, and he tells Grumwald that he said to Caleb that the groundskeeper had just moved out of the guest house um, and he had just retired and left and that's why Caleb can stay there and she says good he'll think the stains are just rust so we're like what the hell happened in that guest house what on earth is going on these two are in some kind of weird weird cahoots and yeah like as like I said by this point by episode three I was fully hooked fully invested I did not have high hopes based on what I had seen about this show and what people had written about it but I was really enjoying it. Episode 4 is called The Devil Has a Face and this ended up getting 1.07 million viewers. So picking up a little bit from the episode before but still not a huge increase in viewers. So Miranda goes out and she is looking for Abby and when she sees her, she sees her with a couple of other ghosts but then when she tries to you know speak to them they all kind of run away so there's obviously something going on here all these ghosts from these tragedies seem to be trapped on the collins like grounds and it's kind of finding out why that is like what is that all about and back at the kind of a guest house, Caleb is writing an email to Hannah and the subject is, hey you, and he starts it with, sorry, I've been so bad at returning calls. Believe me, Hannah, it's not like I don't want to hear your voice. There's so much I need to tell you. Not sure where to begin. Um, and then when Miranda comes in, she kind of distracts him and he doesn't end up uh, sending the email. So we know that kind of, him and Hannah's communication isn't doing great. Um, and I think it's really interesting because when I watched Pretty Little Lies, like when I watch Pretty Little Lies and we get to these um, scenes, it's very, I don't know, like it's almost kind of weirdly jarring because you see Caleb leave in Grave New World and then he comes back and, and you know then we see him again briefly and then he's gone again and then when he comes back he's like you know changed different Caleb um so it was kind of interesting to now see like exactly what happened when he left because it always felt a bit weird in the show that he just went and then 
came back and then was like kind of a different person but then also why would he have left Hannah like it all felt very weird so I guess to kind of actually now know why he left and came back and everything and be able to actually watch the journey he went on kind of makes me understand his character more I don't know if it makes me like his character more I think it actually might make me like his character less and yeah, we have this like kind of flirty exchange where he says about, you know, we should have some kind of code so that um, I always have underwear on when you just like show up like this um, and stuff. And I don't know, there was very flirty vibes and I was not impressed by this. I was not impressed by this at all. I need to work out some sort of system uh, just so I can have some warning. I can put on some underwear. Right. <laughs> Put on underwear. And when Miranda asks about Hannah, because obviously she's kind of feeling these flirty vibes too and is starting to kind of, it seems like, develop feelings for Caleb, um, he said that he's putting off talking to her because he doesn't know what to say to her and because he can't tell her the truth, he doesn't really want to lie to her again um, or lose her, so he's just not talking to her. Which doesn't seem like the best plan. And Miranda says, you know, you could just tell her the truth. She's your girlfriend. I don't know how she'd respond to it, but you could just tell her. And he says that he won't because if Hannah thought for a second that Caleb was in danger, she would come to Ravenswood and he doesn't want her involved in all this crazy shit. So then when they're walking through the uh, cemetery, an older lady says to Caleb that he looks just like Caleb Rivers, her friend Henry's brother. And so they're like, right, this is perfect. This is our actual kind of first proper lead. Um, we're going to get to speak to someone that knew the old Caleb. Um, and they go to see him at a nursing home, but they, like him and Remy, but they just don't really get anything from him. And it feels like maybe it's a bit of a dead end. And we also see that Rochelle, Luke and Liv's mum and Ray have like a little sum sum going on. Okay, they have like a weird connection, like unfinished business. And oh, I don't want to get too much into my thoughts on Ravenswood because I feel like I'm going to do that at the end. But there's lots like this, like weird little plots that we kind of, they tease or like that, you know, kind of run throughout the show that ultimately just kind of go nowhere because it was cancelled after one season. And the Ray and Rochelle one is one that really bugs me because I felt like we were leading to something there and Loki, I was kind of rooting for it. So I feel like someone, I need a Ray and Rochelle <laughs> fan fiction. Somebody tell me what happens with those two. So um, Liv then goes to Caleb's place to talk to him and he's not there, but Miranda is. And she says that she is worried because she thinks that Ray was the one that killed her dad. Because when she asked her mum, Rochelle, when she kind of confronted her about Ray, she admitted that Ray and their dad didn't really get along. Um, so she thinks, you know, maybe he killed him for some reason. Um, and they never, you know, found the murder weapon. Miranda's like, well, my Uncle Ray, he has... Uh, newspaper clippings about your dad's death and he also has what could definitely be used as a murder weapon he's got loads of things like that because obviously he's a mortician so now they think that Ray was the one that killed um, Olivia's dad and so they're talking about that for a little bit and then they also start talking about Caleb and she you know Miranda kind of confides in Liv which is sweet because obviously she made friends with Caleb but it's nice to see her have a kind of like start to grow a female friendship as well and she's talking to her about him and saying that she feels pathetic because she is becoming attached to Caleb when he's already attached to Hannah so then she decides what she's gonna do uh, because she you know cares about him but he obviously cares about Hannah is that she's gonna finish the rest of his email and she literally ghost writes it like full like full on She's a ghost. So she sits there and obviously she can't touch anything. So she doesn't type. She just like writes it with her ghosty spirits. 
And she and she cries as well when she writes it. And she writes, being here has made me realize how much I love you and I want to be with you. I've had a lot of time to think about us and I want to be back at the brew watching you pick the seeds off of your bagel. I know I said I'd be home by the end of the month, but I changed my mind. I'm planning on being back in Rosewood by the weekend. I hope you're not upset that I've been gone this long. Love, C. So she's kind of doing that whole, you know, he loves her, I want him to be happy, so I'm going to kind of send him back to Rosewood and away from all of this stuff. Then if we go back over to Luke, haven't talked about him for a minute, um, he is doing the school play for extra credit and he actually ends up being coupled up with Tess, who obviously has kind of burned a few bridges um, in Ravenswood as of late. And Tess tells Luke that he was right about her, that he wasn't um, that she wasn't a good friend to live and that she did use her but that she does actually miss her um, and he kind of you know starts to feel for her like a little bit and they rehearse and they have a scene where they have to kiss and they end up kissing and then it's kind of like goes on for a little bit longer than it should it's a bit more flirty like it doesn't feel exactly like oh we're just rehearsing it's there's a bit more behind it if you guys want me to do a like what would have happened if ravenswood hadn't been cancelled video then i think that would be kind of fun like maybe talking about where caleb's story would have gone where like the ravenswood story would have gone but also how that then would have affected pretty little liars and maybe how hannah's story would have gone if Caleb had never come back. Miranda then obviously shows him this email that she's written and Caleb isn't happy. He is like, no, 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 I'm not going back to Rosewood. But she says, look, you should just go and be with Hannah. And he says, how can I just go back to Rosewood and you know forget about everything that happened here and everything that I know and forget about you? And earlier in this episode, um, I forgot to mention, but Miranda had basically asked Caleb if her being around all the time was irritating to him. And he didn't really say yes or no, I can't really remember. Um, and he brings it up again and he says that having her around doesn't irritate him, it confuses him. Forget you. This isn't irritation, Miranda. It's confusion. Caleb Rivers, what are you doing? What are you doing? Because I just, this was the only thing that I really didn't enjoy from this show. Aside from this, I think it was really good. And I think this was its downfall, right? Because first, well, I already talked about how I thought having Caleb in it was kind of that it's downfall, not because he's a bad character, but because people loved him with Hannah, right? So when you take something that people love so much, right? Pretty Little Lies is your main show. That's your main focus. That's where the demographic is coming from. And you want those people to move over to Ravenswood and be invested in Ravenswood, right? But the way to do that is not really with a character that is so closely connected to other people in the main show. It's just not going to work. You could have lifted out like Jenna, maybe, um, who else could you have lifted out that people, you need, you need someone that people are invested in and do care about, but also they lift out easier because while Caleb it was technically easy to lift out because you just break up Hannah and Caleb, people aren't going to want that. People are invested in Caleb because they're invested in Hannah and Caleb, not so much because they're just invested in Caleb as his own kind of like character and entity. So when they took him from Pretty Little Liars, their main show, and put him in this spin-off, him alone wasn't really enough to keep people. Um, and I think what made it even worse was then having him have another love interest that is not Hannah. Because people are not going to want that. People, went as soon as he left, already wanted him to come back so that they could have Hannah and Caleb together. So... If it had been Caleb, he had just, they just kept that relationship purely platonic and he had kept keeping in contact with Hannah and obviously she does show up in, in Ravenswood towards the end. I think maybe it would have had more of a chance or like I said, if they had chosen a different character because 
I think they just kind of shot themselves in the foot, breaking up one of, if not their most popular ship in the current show, and then bringing him into this other show and trying to force him with another character that people just, they don't want to see that. So I didn't really like that part of it. And I think also him being confused about his feelings for Miranda and his feelings for Hannah it plays into that whole thing of girls and boys just not actually being able to just be friends. And I hate that. I hate that trope. I think it's so overplayed and just irritating. So that bugs me as well. But then I think it also really changes Caleb's character and the love that he had for Hannah, the fact that he could go to Ravenswood. And obviously it's very heightened emotions because she did die and whatever. But like that he could go to Ravenswood for, at this point, I think he's been there a week. If that, two weeks, maybe. And he's already questioning his feelings for Hannah and his feelings for Miranda. It's just a bit... And, like, the chemistry is there with them, I think, as friends. And I think it could have been romantic as well, but I think the Hannah and Caleb element of it just made it too hard to root for them as a couple. So, like I was saying, he's saying that, you know, this confuses him and it seems like they're maybe about to, I don't know, like, talk about what is happening there with them and their kind of feelings towards each other. When Henry, the guy that I told you about, Caleb's, well, old Caleb's um, brother, comes to the door and he gives Caleb some keys and he says, you know... Um, he has to know what he is up against, right? Because they had gone to him and spoken to him about Caleb and the old, you know, the versions of them and the, and the weird five pack and, and packed and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, he's like, you need to know what you're up against. And he's very panicked and flustered and um, gives him these keys. And so they talk to the group about this and Remy thinks that it could be for the rooms under the school. I can't even remember why she thinks this. She's kind of like the Spencer, right? That's Remy's vibe. She is like very smart and witty. Um, and I guess Liv is maybe more like the Hannah, I guess, maybe. Like she's really cute and bubbly and sweet. Um and Luke, I guess, doesn't really have that much of a crossover. And then maybe Miranda would be more like, like Arya, maybe? I don't really know. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like, if you're picturing everyone's roles in the group, Remy is definitely filling that kind of Spencer um, role. And um, so they go there and... It does, it is for these weird, like, rooms underneath the school. Um, and it unlocks a door and they find a box in there. So while Remy and Caleb are at the school, we go back to the Collins ground. And uh, Miranda is kind of showing Liv around and takes her to his office. And is like, you know, is there anything here that could kind of help with your dad? Um, and they find that he keeps locks of hair. So they're in jars and they're labelled and he has Abby's hair and he has Miranda's, right? So this is kind of how he manages to keep them, like their spirits. Um, remember, because Miranda can't get out, like she can't leave. Um, and, you know, Miranda's like, she is so angry about this because she's like, you know, he didn't want me when I was alive. Like, why does he think he can keep me when I'm dead? And she gets so angry that all this, like, you know, energy is built up. And the drawers start going crazy, right? Miranda. He won't come near me when I'm alive, but thinks he could keep some of me when I'm dead? He thinks he could rip me apart and shut me in a cabinet? <laughs> Her jar breaks. And she is then, like, outside of the graveyard. And she's able to just go. She's able to go free. Um... So Liv, like, runs out. She's like, this is not what I, you know, this is not what I need. <laughs> um, this is too much for me. Because she's like, I can be seen by people. Like, Miranda can walk around this house. She can snoop on anybody she likes. But Liv's like, I don't want to be caught dead in this place. So 
she leaves and Miranda goes to the school to try and find Caleb, right? And when she gets there, her mum is there, right? Um, it's the kind of like ghost of her mum is sat there and Miranda goes and sits with her and she's obviously really happy to see her because her mum died when she was... I can't remember how old they said, I think maybe six? So Luke ends up admitting to Remy that he kissed Tess and Remy asks if it was just for the play and he says that he doesn't know. He just wants to be with someone that isn't constantly talking about ghosts and pacts and curses and everything like that. Um, which I felt like was really unfair on Remy because she's really, really sweet and has always been really sweet to him. So it felt a little bit left field. Caleb goes to confront Ray about the jars, right? Because Liv has filled him in on the jars. But when he gets there to confront Ray, Ray's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And all of the jars are gone. So he goes back to his room and he's fuming. He's fuming. And he starts kicking the box that they had found under the school um, because there's like, it's locked, right? Um, and he kicks it until it opens. And we see Miranda and her mum, obviously, are, at, are sat together. And Miranda's mum um, takes her into the light. So you kind of think maybe, you know, the spirit of her mum has come to save her and, like, bring her over so that she won't be trapped in Ravenswood anymore. So episode five is called Scared to Death. And this had 1.11 million viewers. So again, it has gone up again. Um, again, it has gone up again. Again, it's gone up <laughs> um, from the previous episode. And this is actually the best rated episode of the whole season. It has a 7.4 out of 10 on IMDb. So when we see Miranda, she's now in her parents' house and she feels, you know, safe um, and she feels good. And it turns out they also have another little girl um, staying there with them called Max. But Caleb has a dream about this and he realises that Max is evil. So it's unclear whether the whole thing is kind of a weird, like, hallu not hallucination, but like a weird trap or if it's really Miranda's parents but it's just Max that is more like an evil spirit that's kind of trying to sabotage Miranda. So like I said um, at the end of the previous episode Caleb got this box open and in it they find a letter from old Caleb to old Miranda basically confessing his love for her but he never got to finish it and we see a flashback um, of them Everyone says we're too young to know what we want. But I've known since I first saw you. It didn't really make me any more invested in their relationship, I can't lie. It was it kind of gave me like uh vampire diaries vibes to be honest, with the like a present day story and then when we flash back to, you know, when you see like uh Catherine and Stefan. Um, and then you see them in like Elena and like that was kind of the vibe that I was getting, like old Caleb and new Caleb and old Miranda and new Miranda and yeah <laughs> um so I think th when this this is gonna sound so harsh I don't mean it to because I love Tyler Blackburn I love that man and I think he done, did such a good job playing Caleb and he did a good job of playing him in this series and he is good in this series but when it comes to like the Ravenswood show, the bits that I really enjoyed were the other characters um, because I didn't have any attachment to them. I didn't have any expectations of them. Whereas with Caleb, I was kind of like, you know, he's already part of this other story and him doing these things and writing this love, like seeing him write this love letter for Miranda and all this stuff was just kind of like, but he's supposed to be with Hannah. Um, and it was really hard to separate that in my mind. Whereas like Luke and Liv and Remy um, and even Miranda as well, because she was new, I was becoming really invested in them and their kind of side stories and side quests. Um, and that is what I really wished had carried on. Um, if, you know, they had been renewed for season two and season three, I think focusing more on those guys would have really helped the show. So in this box, there's also a picture of a bedroom and Caleb says that in his dream, this is the bedroom that Miranda was in. 
So they decide to go to Henry and see if he knows where this is. But when they try to find him, he actually is dead. And Ray says that he looks like he was scared to death. So now their only kind of lead that kind of seemed to know maybe a little bit of what was going on is now dead. So Grumwald then comes to see Caleb and is like, do you, do you want to see Miranda? And he's like, well, yeah. So she says to go to the place that Miranda loved the most and wanted to be the most. And she gives him the address for Miranda's old um, childhood home where she lived with her parents, obviously, before uh, she was put into foster care. So he goes, but it turns out to just be an empty lot now. So again, he's kind of back to square one because he doesn't know that Miranda has gone with her mum. And then we see Grumwald tell Ray that it was a shame that Henry had to go like that and that Caleb is looking for Miranda. So Ray has to do it tonight. And it's just like, it's so frustrating because I want to know why they're all being so shady. Like, I, <laughs> like that is what's frustrating about this show. Like, it is good and it's good to watch. But then I can't be like, you know, when I talk about Pretty Little Lies and stuff, I'm like, oh, and this obviously links back to this. Because I don't know what any of this was going to link to. And they were setting it up genuinely, like, really well. So, Yeah. Anyway, I digress. So Remy ends up ending things with Luke after his kiss with Tess. And we have um, Liv and her boyfriend Dylan, who we hadn't seen for a while. He is kind of like, you're shutting me out. You know, you're spending all this time with your new friends. And she lets him come in and look through this box with her and try and, you know, help her figure out what's going on with it. And he seems really invested in trying to help her, which she finds really sweet. Um, we hadn't really seen a lot of their relationship up until this point, so um, I was kind of here nor there, really, with him. Um, but it did seem like he had good intentions. Then we see Caleb on the phone with Hannah, and this was really fun because, unlike before, it was off screen. We actually did get to see her, and she's kind of unsure about Miranda and this whole situation, um, you know, and she's missing him, but he says that it's fine, you know, reassures her everything um, is going to be okay, and that he loves her, which was really cute. And yeah, I feel like if this was the approach they had taken, that he was still 100% invested in Hannah, and we got to hear things about her, and then um, maybe, yeah, he had been in the first few episodes, or even in the first season, um, but then had gone back to Hannah at the end of the season and then season two had carried on with just the four of them and she says to him that she's made a reservation at the Ravenswood Inn to come and see him because he's too busy to come back to Rosewood and obviously he panics because he's like I don't want to come into this godforsaken town so he says that um to just cancel it and that he will come back to Rosewood this weekend um, and she says that they'll get takeout and they'll cuddle and that was a really cute scene. Like teddy bears? <laughs> what is so funny? Nothing, you saying teddy bears, it just makes me laugh. Say it again. No, that's not gonna happen. Come on, just one more time. No. Like I promise that I won't laugh. <sighs> teddy bears. <laughs> So in another dream, Caleb sees Miranda again and tries to warn her about Max, but Miranda is kind of so blinded by the fact that she's living the life she's kind of always wanted with her parents there that she won't listen to him. Um, and meanwhile, this is happening. We see Ray uh, digging up Miranda's grave and... Grumble's telling him to hurry and he then goes into the coffin with scissors. Um, Remy, like I said, uh, Remy has started sleepwalking and she ends up going to a cafe and she asks the, you know, other members of the group um, of like the Ravenswood Five to meet her there. And while they're there, she's like, you know, why, why have I been guided here, right? Because dreams and the supernatural world are very linked in Ravenswood. So like Caleb is able to speak to Miranda through dreams and also Remy's sleepwalking 
she feels like she's being led to these places by some other force, right? So she's like, why would I be led to this cafe? And Liv works out that it's actually the blueprint from uh, the box. There used to be a bank here or like below or something like that. Um, so this is kind of maybe where the box it was supposed to lead them. So they go down into the basement and they break through this wall down there and they find two skeletons of people that had shut themselves in to the wall to die, um, which was insane. And they also find a letter from old Miranda to old Caleb. My dearest Caleb, I was only the day we met that I understood the meaning of eternity. I promise to honor, honor, and cherish you. But not until death do us part. For eternity. So Caleb then realises the letter that they had found from old Caleb, and obviously this letter, aren't letters at all. They're actually wedding vows. And they find wedding certificates and they realise that when they had drowned, it was actually on their wedding day. And Luke finds more information on the curse and it looks like the two skeletons that they found, um, Thomas and Esther, actually sacrificed themselves to try to bring Caleb and Miranda back from the dead. And Remy is like, well, maybe it worked because of how much Miranda and Caleb look like old Miranda and Caleb. But Caleb insists, he's like, I can't be this Caleb. I can't be because I love Hannah. I don't, like, I'm not destined to be with Miranda. That just doesn't make any sense. And so the group's like, well, maybe you guys were brought back to put an end to this curse. You know, maybe that's why Miranda's spirit can't move on because there's unfinished business. You guys have to put a stop to this. And Caleb is very overwhelmed and he's like, look, I don't think that we're the chosen ones or anything like that. Like, this is all a bit much for me. So they find uh, another picture of Miranda, old Miranda, in front of this house and they recognise it. So they go there and in there they find um, Max, right, the evil little girl. And she says that Miranda is waiting for them in hell. Um, and there's actually um, a little Chucky reference in here. Well, I think it is anyway, um, where she says, want to play? And you know me, I love Chucky. That's my guy. So I loved this reference. So they find Miranda in the old bedroom. And to her, it's like this dream world. But obviously we're seeing it for what it really is, which is, is this old abandoned house. And they try to convince her that this isn't heaven and that she needs to come with them. Um, but she genuinely believes that it is heaven and doesn't want to go with them. And so the house starts shaking and they manage to find this exit behind the wardrobe doors. So Liv, Remy and Luke all jump out and Caleb is trying to convince her to come with them. And Miranda's mum comes in and she's trying to convince her to stay. Caleb's trying to convince her to go. And Miranda asks her mom if she remembers the day that they she taught her to ride a bike and she says of course she does like that's one of her favorite memories and this is when Miranda realizes that it's all fake because Miranda never learned to ride a bike so she decides to leave with them and she leaves out of this door um and just as Caleb is about to leave um he gets knocked out and he falls um and hurts himself so he falls out and hits the ground and he actually almost dies in this scene, which was crazy. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna kill Caleb as well. Like what the hell is going on in this place? And so he's with Miranda kind of in that, between, you know, the, the paranormal and the real, like that's where he is. He's in that little bit of purgatory there for a moment. And he's actually able to touch her because he's in like the kind of same world as her, I guess. And, um, she says that he has to go back and he says that being with her feels right but she insists that he has to go back and gives him a kiss on the cheek and he actually pokes her on the forehead um which is was actually kind of cute okay sue me it was kind of cute because in grave new world um she actually pokes him on the forehead and says that it is to ward off evil spirits and then she says that she just like made it up so the fact that he then did the callback to that was cute but i didn't like that he was literally like i'm i'll just die and stay with you and be a ghost with you forever like 
did you forget about Hannah or? Bro, what are you doing? Not really, Cam. If you don't go back now. It's okay. I can't explain it, but it never feels right being here with you. It's not right yet. But I know it will be. We have a heartbeat. So in the hospital, they say that Caleb is actually going to be fine. He's, you know, he's going to live. Um, and we see that what Ray had done in the grave was that he had gotten more of Miranda's hair um, and he puts it in back into the jar, right, to trap her back at the, the Collins grounds. And Grumwald tells him that the group is still alive and they both don't seem happy that obviously Luke, Liv, Remy and Caleb are all still, they're still alive and kicking. Then we see Max lead Dylan, Liv's boyfriend, right? So evil girl is leading the boyfriend into a cupboard and it's then revealed that he is in on it. He is in on it. Is that not mental? I was literally, I was gagged. I was like, this is crazy shit. After all we did to get them in that house. How did this happen? Your connection was stronger than I thought. I did not expect it at all. At this point, I was like, I can't believe I'm so invested in this ridiculous show that I know is going to end so unlike satisfying, like so unsatisfying because I know there's no season two. So I was like, I can't believe I've gotten this invested in this show. But like, it was good. Okay, this was a good reveal. Also, um, I forgot to mention this as well, but Max, the little girl, is actually the little girl that Hannah saw in Grave New World because I always thought that. I was always like, why does Hannah care about these twins? Like, what? And it's never, like, brought up in the show again. Um, so I thought maybe it was just a nod to, like, I mean, there's twins everywhere in that show, right? Um, so I thought it was maybe just a nod to that. Um, but actually, it was Max. And then we see her um, in... Ravenswood so I guess Hannah in Grave New World was just kind of had a feeling that there was something dodgy going on with her um so yeah that was uh, a little connection that I noticed as well so I feel like it gets a little confusing and this is the mid-season finale right this is the mid-season finale so let's just do a little not recap but like the gist of the curse okay so the gist of the curse is because I found this kind of confusing when I was watching it but I think I had the hang of it. So they don't ever want a Rosewood soldier to die. And I I don't really know why. I mean, I obviously you don't want anyone to die, but like they it's just a weird thing. But they don't want any soldiers that go away to war from Rosewood to die. Right? So no <laughs> it's so in ridiculous who wrote this. Um so no Ravenswood, did I say Rosewood? I think I might have said Rosewood, ignore me. No Ravenswood soldier will die as long as five teenagers are sacrificed. What kind of trade-off is that? Like, what? So anyway, that's the gist. So when Remy's mom obviously went away um, to serve, she was the only to serve. <laughs> She was the only one that came back. Um, and that is because when they drove off of that cliff, right, when Miranda drove them off that cliff, they were all supposed to die in order to make sure that Remy's mum lived. Um, and that is the pattern that has been happening. Every time that five of these teenagers die, um, a Ravenswood soldier comes back safe from whatever war they are fighting. <laughs> So we're actually going to take a brief um, break from Ravenswood um, because, like I said, this was the mid-season finale for Ravenswood. So it finished sometime in November, I think, um, and it had a um, two-month break. Um, 
And while this was happening, we actually see Caleb. Um, he comes back in April Liars just for one episode. And it is season four, episode 14, Who's in the Box. And this is the April Liars episode that comes directly after um, Grave New World. So I'm going to do a whole video on like the April Liars universe and the timeline and how, it, how everything takes place. But between um, Grave New World, which is episode 13 of season 4, and What's in the Box, which is episode 14 of season 4, so literally just that tiny little gap, we have five episodes of Ravenswood. Okay? So, Caleb shows up at the brew um, to see Hannah, and they have coffee together, and he says that he misses her, um, but everything with Miranda is really, really complicated. I missed you. I missed touching you. I missed kissing you. I missed watching you walk barefoot across the kitchen floor. <laughs> I thought I'd go crazy missing you. Yeah, he hasn't told her that Miranda has died. He just says that things are just very complicated with her family and they're kind of just trying to figure all of that out. While I was editing this, I was like... It just, it became even more insane to me, this scene. Because he literally, like comes in greets hannah like kisses her everything tells her how much he missed her that he'd go crazy missing her um and everything like that when literally a few days before this maybe a week before this he was dead and willing to live in the afterlife with miranda and she literally says in that clip of them together that it's not right yet, but it will be kind of insinuating that they would be together at some point and he doesn't like say no. So I just think that's so insane. And I'm going to talk more later in this video about when Caleb comes back properly and tells Hannah about Ravenswood, but I don't think he ever aside from obvious unless like we're supposed to believe that it was off camera but that he ever truly tells her the full extent of how close he and Miranda got because and like it's so I just find it so crazy like it's like it's low-key like gaslighting to the highest degree because he tries to say to her oh it's not what it sounds like it's not what you think that it is with Miranda and all this stuff and it's like, yeah, but it, it was. Like it, like, it basically was. So, yeah, this is what I mean when I say I feel like Ravenswood made me like Caleb less. And then also in this, he says, oh, you know, like, Miranda's good and everything. And also I find it so crazy that he was just able to lie to her for that long. About Miranda being dead, about his feelings towards Miranda, about everything that was going on in Ravenswood. And obviously it was like easy because he gets very upset at the end of this episode, but I don't know. I mean, it, like, we'll just watch that scene of them in the afterlife together. That man seemed pretty, pretty, you know, invested in her. So then to like, just go back to Hannah and be like, oh my god, like I love you, miss you so much. And they obviously sleep together because they're like oh we should you know get out of here of the brew yeah mm. planning on doing a pre like ranking the pretty little liars characters soon and i feel like after watching ravenswood i don't know maybe caleb's gonna have to come down a tier and i never thought i would say it but i want to know what you guys think though like is does now knowing, because I assume a good amount of you that are watching this video haven't seen Ravenswood before, so does this now make you like Caleb less? Like, do you almost wish you didn't know? Because <laughs> if you did, then I'm sorry. Um, about this stuff, or are you like, oh, it's separate from Pretty Little Liars, so I don't count it as, like, canon, I only count what I watch in Pretty Little Liars? Because, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, Loki, I feel like it made me think, well... I'm going to talk about this in my, like, Spencer and Caleb deep dive, but I wasn't surprised by them getting together 
at all. It did not surprise me at all. I I wish I'd run at one of them Pretty Little Lies blogs back in the day because then I would have the receipts for the things that I thought. But I thought there was something between Spencer and Caleb in like season four, five, I think it was. I was kind of like, is that? No, they wouldn't do that. And then they did. So I was not surprised by that. But I think the way that this whole thing has gone down with Miranda the whole Spencer and Caleb thing surprises me even less. I feel like people are like, oh, how could Caleb do that? And I'm like, well, at this point, my guy's got a little bit of a little bit of a history. So, yeah. I feel like it just makes me watch these Pretty Little Liars scenes so much differently now, like in between all the Ravenswood stuff. And then later when they're talking in the park, uh, Hannah says that Mrs. De Laurentiis, Jessica, talks about Ali visiting her in her dreams and talking to her. And Caleb is like, maybe she is, because obviously, you know, we know that Caleb is a little bit more versed in this now. And if Alison really was dead, then her ghost could have easily been talking to Mrs. D in her dreams because he's like, I know that shit. I've, I've experienced that shit. And when Hannah asks why, you know, Caleb's being very vague like she asks all these questions about Ravenswood and he just says that it's complicated and he says that he has to go back and this upsets Hannah because he doesn't give her a real reason why he has to go back. So back at Hannah's house it's a really upsetting scene he um says that he has to leave and Hannah begs him to stay or to let her go with him but he says that she can't and she asks if it's about Miranda basically insinuating you know, basically kind of asking him, are you leaving me for Miranda? And he says that it is about Miranda and that Miranda needs him, but it's not like it sounds. And this scene is so heartbreaking because you can just tell that Hannah thinks that Caleb has chosen Miranda and she thinks that it's all her fault and that he is leaving her for someone else. And it's so, so sad. Hannah, I gave her to you. I'm so stupid. You are not stupid. This is not what happened. Well, then what happened? Tell me what happened. I can't. So Caleb leaves and they kind of leave on this angry note. But then um, Caleb, um, Hannah goes to find Caleb in his car and says that she wants a proper goodbye. And they say goodbye and he drives away um, and he cries. And it's just like so sad when he says, I won't forget anything. Oh, my God. This scene is so sad and I, I don't know why I kind of I rewatched this episode because I was making this video and I forgot how sad this was. I don't know why I was just like, oh, my God, I forgot like how heartbreaking this scene is. But do you know what actually made it even more sad when I was watching it? Like because I'd watched Pretty Little Lies, right? And I saw this. I was like, oh, my God, this is so sad. But I was like, well, Caleb's obviously going to come back, like I assume. Um, and he obviously does so it was fine but then when I watched this I was like this could have been it that was what was so crazy to me when I was watching because now I was watching it with a fresh set of eyes I was watching it like this is so weird because Miranda is dead like <laughs> like when you watch this and you haven't seen Ravenswood you're like oh my god he's going back to Miranda in Ravenswood that is so crazy what the, what is wrong with him but then when you actually are watching Ravenswood at the time when you're watching this you're like He's going through so much shit over there and Miranda is dead and this is such a weird scene. Like, why did he make it sound like he was going... Anyway, this is why I want to make this video, right, on what would have happened if Ravenswood hadn't been cancelled. Because this could have been Hannah and Caleb. This could have been them forever. Maybe they would have brought him back, like, to kind of add more closure. But... We then don't see Caleb in Pretty Little Liars again until season five, after Ravenswood has been cancelled, right? So had Ravenswood been renewed, like Hannah could have been with Travis for longer. Maybe she would have ended up with him, maybe not. This could have been like the final Caleb and Hannah scene we ever saw. Is that not insane? Is that not insane? <laughs> So now we're going back to Ravenswood and this is episode six, Revival. 
and this actually ended up bringing in 1.69 million viewers and I will tell you for why because like I said the pilot aired right after Grave New World and then the rest of the episodes were airing solely on their own on a Tuesday that was like the slot because Prill Lies had gone for break now when Ravenswood had come back from its mid-season break, so had Pretty Little Liars. So now, Ravenswood is airing directly after Pretty Little Liars again, so that had given it a kind of boost in the ratings. So we start this episode with a flashback of old Caleb and old Miranda, and they end up having sex, and then they overhear um, a town meeting with the original pack, right? The original five pact um, is being signed, and Esther right? Remember Esther, the skeleton, is Miranda's mother, um, old Miranda's mother, and she's against it, and she asks Thomas, right, remember Thomas, the other skeleton, and he's Caleb, old Caleb's dad, um, to stop it, but he says that he won't, and he ends up signing it, so he signs the pact for, to get rid of his own son, is that not insane? Back to present day Ravenswood, and the guy kind of updating Caleb on what happened because he went back to Rosewood for three days, which obviously we saw in What's in the Box. Um, and they're looking for a preacher who might have more information. And they think that Ray dug up Miranda's body uh, for more hair because she's now stuck there again, which obviously we know is true. We saw we saw that whole whole thing. So Liv and Luke go back home and when they get there, Ray is there and he's dropping off an orchid for their mum and he's just being shady boots as always. But honestly, like Ray kind of like he kind of slays. Um, I really liked Ray's character. Like I thought he was like shady boots, but he was also kind of sassy and like... I was very, I was very intrigued. I was very invested in his character. And Miranda asks Caleb what happened in Rosewood. And he says that he broke up with Hannah because of Miranda. Okay. Broke up with Hannah. Because of you. If she doesn't know that I'm dead, you do realize what she must be thinking about you and me, right? I, I guess I do. You guess? Caleb, she thinks I stole you from her. I don't think you need to be worrying about your reputation right now. Hey! He says that if Hannah doesn't have anything to do with Caleb, then she won't get her like Miranda did. So he's like basically scared that Hannah's gonna die if he stays with her. And this up obviously upsets Miranda because now she's like, well, Hannah's gonna think that I stole you from her. Like, well, <laughs> why did you do that to me? Um, because as we know, that's exactly what Hannah thinks. So Luke and Remy are actually back together, which I really loved them. I thought their relationship was really sweet. I was really invested in them. Um, and yeah, I thought they were, had great chemistry. Remy isn't getting any sleep because obviously we know she sleepwalks and she's just got all this dream stuff going on. She's, the gal's stressed. Okay, the gal is stressed. So Liv goes and she visits Miranda. Um, like I said, I think they have a really sweet friendship and they're talking about Dylan, the boyfriend, right? Who we now know is the biggest shady boot of all the shady boots. And she says that she wants to protect him. And Miranda asks if they've had sex, you know, revealing that now she's going to be a virgin for eternity. And Liv says they haven't had sex, but that she does love him. So Miranda then goes looking for these jars, right? Because she wants to break her jar so that she can roam free again, but she can't find them. And they think that maybe Gromwald has a way of protecting herself from spirits, but they're not really sure what it is because when she was kind of trying to snoop around, this weird thing attacked her. So Liv tries to confront Gromwald about this, but she doesn't really get much from her. Um, so we're kind of left with a... Well, Gromwald has always appeared very supernatural anyway, so it's not really surprising that she would have some kind of supernatural entity, you know, like looking after her. I almost asked you to stay with me. It's lonely there. I didn't want you to stay just for the company. Mm, kept you from asking. Mostly because I wasn't sure if you and I, you know. And Miranda actually ends up telling Caleb that when he had, you know, almost died in the scene that we saw in the mid-season break, that she 
wanted to ask him to stay with her. Um, but the only reason that she didn't was because she wasn't sure if he would. So at this point, it's kind of like full blown, like these two like each other, which like I said, not here for that. I touched you on the forehead. It's not like we kissed, okay? You didn't mean anything. Dude, if you had to point out that you didn't kiss, it meant something. So Remy tells Luke that she thinks her dreams are trying to tell her something, but the dark spirits don't want her to know, right? So the good spirits are trying to show Remy something, but the dark spirits come and like scare her or wake her up or whatever like that, um, or try and like get to her in her dreams so that she can't find out what they're trying to tell her. So it's like ghost on ghost crime up in here, right? So... She says to Luke, she's like, I need you to watch me sleep. <laughs> she's like, I need you to protect me, keep me like, you know, say, let me go wherever I'm going to go and just make sure that I'm good. Make sure nothing wakes her up and to follow her if she sleepwalks. So they get her to sleep at Caleb so they can all kind of be there um, to monitor her. So she goes to sleep and Liv is like, you guys have this covered. So she goes to meet up with Dylan but it turns out to be a trap involving Max. We're in the exact same spot as the flashback of old Branda and Caleb. And um, she decides that she is going to have sex with him for the first time. And at this, at this exact moment, Remy wakes up. Well, not wakes up. She starts sleepwalking. And she goes to the same location, right? As this, as this flashback of um, old Caleb and Miranda. And... In her dream, it's so crazy. So she's like, it was really cool. I tell you, it's actually cool. So she is walking through this like old barn, walking through this field, and she is seeing what happened. She's seeing um, the, you know, the pact being done. She's seeing, uh, you know, Miranda, like all that stuff. She's seeing everything happen. Um, and they're like obviously following her, but it's just this like empty room and everything. And I don't know, it was cool. So Miranda goes to confront Grumwald about just all this shit and she apologizes, but she says that this is the way that it has to be. And this weird mist thing attacks Miranda again and Grumwald calls it off. Um, and it seems to be a kind of relative of hers or some kind of spirit that is assigned to keep Grunwald safe. So yeah, like I said, back to Remy, she sees the pact going down. She sees exactly who signed it and she sees that the priest then hands the pact off to somebody in a funeral car from the Collins family, like their business. And then <laughs> the priest turned into a raven and flew away. <laughs> This show is so ridiculous. I thought they were going to like eventually get to where Dylan and Liv were, but they don't. And Dylan and Liv end up having sex. And um, I think this was obviously part of Max and Dylan's plan to get Liv to trust Dylan and be closer to him. Um, and, you know, form a stronger connection to Dylan than the connection that she has with the group to try and make her kind of like the weak link. I've also put, um, Caleb is thriving in Ravenswood. He looks so good. I, I stand by that. So episode seven is called Home is Where the Heart Is. Seriously, check the floorboards. And this has 1.13 million viewers. So a significant drop from the mid-season premiere. Um, but also, you know, a little bit higher than two, three, and four, I think, because like I said, it is now showing after pre Lies again. So a gardener finds a knife buried in the Matheson's garden. Um, so the police then have a warrant. They have enough to get a warrant to search their house. Caleb's dad actually comes to visit him in this episode. So obviously we met him first in April Liars. And um, he says that it's because Henry Rivers, the guy that obviously had died, his like lawyer wants to talk to them basically about his will because he is a relative. But he says to Caleb, you know, that he wants to meet with him after he has this appointment um, and they'll like chat and catch up. And he, Caleb is very weird when obviously his dad asks about Hannah. He knows Hannah? 
She is the one that got us back together. He really likes her. So Miranda kind of sees this interaction go down and she asks Caleb if his dad had met Hannah before and if he knows her. And Caleb says, well, yeah, Hannah's actually the one that got him and his dad um, together. And the, his dad really, really likes Hannah. And this kind of obviously upsets Miranda because she's like, well, I'm trying to be the ghosty girlfriend in your life. But it, it just kind of reminds her that, again, she can't have this like normal relationship that well, Dylan and Liv is a bit of a different story, but like that Hannah and Caleb had where she can meet his dad and all that kind of stuff. Come back to Remy, because I love Remy, okay? I love that gal. And she wakes up and she has drawn pictures all over the house. Like it seems like maybe the dark spirits this time took over her sleepwalking and she has drawn all these crazy pictures all, like the house is covered in these creepy drawings. It's kind of like Twitch's style, you know? And, um... They say things like you shouldn't have seen, right? So she shouldn't have seen the pack. So they put Rochelle in the police car um, because, you know, they're arresting her now that they found this murder weapon in her garden. And they actually hit her head on the police car as she's going in. Um, so then Luke gets really angry and he's trying to protect her and they take him away too, which just leaves Liv on her own. So while Luke's in this jail cell, um, there's like parts of this show that obviously I'm leaving out because they're not really relevant to the plot, but there's lots of little like creepy moments and things that happen. There are a lot more, you know, that kind of supernatural element comes out more. Um, and this is one of them. So the dark spirits actually possess the guy in the cell next to Luke. You're going to wish you were dead before this is over. And then... You'll get your wish. Honestly, this show is really creepy at times. Like, it's, it's genuinely good. It's like, obviously there's some, you know, dodgy animation and whatever. But I think they had something really good here. I don't know. I'm a Ravenswood apologist screw it. So Ray comes to see Liv saying that Rochelle had called him um, to go and check on them um, and Liv kind of confronts him about her theories and he insists that even though you know he disagreed with her father and they maybe didn't get on he still respected him. So Caleb meets up with his dad and he tells him that he and Hannah broke up that you know he wasn't good for Hannah and his dad is like what are you doing you fool? <laughs> um, like he should get her back but Caleb insists that he isn't leaving Rosewood and his dad says well that kind of works out because I actually inherited a house from Henry you know and he's like you know I might fix it up and sell it and Caleb is a real asshole to his dad um, but it's just to try and get him to leave town so again he doesn't you know get mixed up in all of this so Miranda and Remy work out that um, Gromwell's protector is her sister, well they think it's her sister called Beatrice, um, that died as a part of the pact, right? She was one of the five. Miranda tries to speak to Beatrice but it just upsets her and she ends up seeing a picture of um, Beatrice with a baby. So she's like, this is so sad, like she died when she was just, you know, just become a mum um as part of this ridiculous pact and now she's obviously trapped in the house like Miranda is and she realizes that Gromwald isn't Beatrice's sister she's be she's Beatrice's daughter so she the baby in this picture is Gromwald and that's why Beatrice is so protective over her and everything it's because she's her mom which was so sad like I thought that was just so, like, such a good, you know, plot twist and reveal, but also just, like, really heartbreaking. And she has no interest in helping Miranda because if the pact is, you know, broken and if she's, her spirit is free, then she won't be with Gromwald anymore. Whereas as long as she's stuck at the Ray, uh, as long as she's stuck at the Collins compound, whatever we want to call it, I've forgotten what I call it now, um she gets to see her daughter which is just oh let bless her bless her heart so Liv goes to visit Rochelle and tells her to keep Ray away from the house but 
Rochelle insists that Ray is not dangerous, that he is absolutely fine. And then we go back to Remy and she almost stabs Luke while she's sleepwalking. Um, and she accidentally cuts her dad. So they decide they need to take her to a like sleep clinic or something to try and get this under control. And Caleb ends up apologizing to his dad and says that he will help him with the house. So I assume had season two come, like Caleb's dad would have been more of a main character and they maybe would have lived in this house together so springer comes back and we haven't seen him for a while but he comes back and he tells Liv that um she doesn't really know dylan and he tries to like chase after her and talk to her and then tess <laughs> accidentally hits him with her car insane absolutely insane so at the end of this episode b comes beatrice comes to miranda and gives her her jar of hair and miranda's like well what about the others you know what about everyone else and b says look just basically says just break your glass and leave everyone else there alone and you just go wherever you need to go <laughs> So episode eight is called I'll Sleep When I'm Dead and this has 1.23 million viewers. And Caleb asks Miranda if she's gonna open the jar now that she has it and she says that she is, but she's also scared that Ray will just trap her again. Like he has the power to just go back until she's bold in there. So Caleb's like, I'm gonna put a stop to this. And he goes to see Ray and confronts him um, with the jar. And Ray like visibly panics when Caleb goes to open it. So he's like, what the hell is going on here? So then we have Luke helping Remy check in to the sleep clinic. Um, and they think the, the dreams that she's having now are actually linked back to a dream that she used to have when she was a kid. Um, and it's, you know, the same knife uh, that she had drawn this time around. She had drawn when she was a kid and this kind of like dark figure so they think maybe it's connected um and i found this really interesting because remy seems to be like almost like the main part of this story like she's so much more intertwined in it than the others um and i was really interested to see where that was going to lead to and while they're at the hospital, Olivia speaks to Remy's dad and it's like, why does Springer, you know, hate like my family so much? And he says um, that it's because Olivia's dad, the mayor, actually put Springer's dad in prison. So that's why there's this like big beef between them that she didn't understand, like why he was bullying her, like we saw in the earlier episodes. Um, it actually stems back to that. We've gone this uk winter we've gone back to my like spooky season lighting again so remy's sleep is being monitored and she has a dream where she sees her younger self and she has to protect them from uh, the priest with the knife right so it's like is he actually coming to kill them like to like kind of like freddy krueger style right to kill her in her dreams to keep this pact up so Olivia goes to the hospital to talk to Springer, but he's asleep. Um, he was fine, by the way. I forgot to say that after the car crash. Um, so she goes to the hospital to see him, but he's asleep and she takes his phone and there's a recording um, of him on it saying that he was the one that planted the knife in Olivia and Luke's back garden. So she gives it to Caleb and Caleb's like, look, I'll see if I can find anything else on it because lest we forget he's the techno boy toy. So Olivia and Tess see Ray visiting Springer um, and then as soon as he leaves Springer starts like crashing um, and it's like you know code blue like everyone runs in there so it's a bit like what is his deal because remember Springer used to work for Ray like back in the earlier episode so there's something weird going on here. So unseen places, the phrase unseen places gets burned into Caleb's wall. And when they Google it, this book comes up about Ravenswood and they try to take it from a teacher, Mr. Price. Mr. Price is so irrelevant. I don't know if maybe they were gonna 
like bring him in more in season two but he kind of doesn't really do anything apart from introduce himself to caleb in like the second episode and then also get mad at them for taking a book from him in this episode and miranda kind of expressed that she's you know feeling sad that soon caleb's gonna move in with his dad and he's gonna meet new girls at school and he's gonna forget about her oh yeah because i don't know if i mentioned yet um but caleb enrolled at ravenswood high or whatever this i can't remember what the school's called so they were fully intending for this to be him now, for this to be like Caleb in the long haul, because he was enrolling at the school, he was going to live with his dad in, you know, this house that they've inherited, and I guess, you know, be with Miranda. Like, it was, they were, set, they were setting it up for this to be his life now. So Liv tells Caleb and Miranda that Springer had a blood clot, but she doesn't think it's a coincidence that Ray was in there right before it happened. Meanwhile, you know, Remy's dreaming again, and they're monitoring her, um, and this time she sits down with the priest and, like, talks to him in her dream. And she asks if them, you know, they're being chosen at random, for this pact if the teens just get randomly selected and he says no and she says well we broke the pact by still being alive and he says they're alive for now but there's a debt and he always collects and uh, like in real time they're obviously monitoring remy and she is like freaking out like her body is shaking um and they aren't able to wake her up and luke tells the others that he thinks something some dark spirit is keeping her in this dream so miranda goes into remy's dream because obviously she can do that and it manages to save her and protect her from the priest um so that she can wake up and Remy tells her, she's like, I think Miranda just saved my life because I think he was going to kill me in there. And if he'd killed me in there, I think that would have been it. Like I would have died in the real world as well. Liv then goes back to the hospital to return Springer's phone. And he tells her that Dylan is behind everything. So it's like, oh shit. <laughs> So episode nine, um, the penultimate episode of the season is called Along Came a Spider and it got 1.05 million viewers. So yeah, Rochelle is arrested for the murder um, and this creepy lady has a spider crawl out of her face. Oh, so gross. I absolutely hate it. Like the special effects isn't good, but it was good enough for me to be like, ew that was nasty. Olivia doesn't want to believe that Dylan could be in on it and she is choosing to believe that Springer is just lying and making it up. And like I said, Caleb has enrolled at the school now and Miranda's kind of going like with him, which makes him look crazy because it looks like he's just like talking to himself. And these girls, you know, start like bullying him um, and Miranda like taunts them and stuff. Was your last school uniform a hospital gown of booties? <laughs> Can you open my next? What are you laughing at, Freakazoid? So Mr. Price, who I told you about earlier, he tells Caleb to be careful with Ray because everyone kind of knows that he works for Ray, kind of, like, ish, and lives there. And when Caleb asks why, he says because there's a chapel and he never lets anyone inside of it. Which, like, fares, but also, like, no one is friends with him, so why would he let anyone in there? And, like, why is that a reason to not trust him? Obviously, he's dodgy as, but, like, why does Mr. Price know that he's dodgy as? Anyway. Also, this scene with Dylan was so weird. Like, it looked green screened or, like, th like they had to edit him in. But then he's actually in the scene later on. So I don't know if it was, like, a refilm or something, but this scene just looked so weird to me. But anyway, Dylan goes to see Liv and insists that Springer is just messing with her and asks him, you know, to forgive her for being away for however long i think he was away for like a week or something um and she does so remy goes to speak to springer to see what this is all about um and he's like dylan didn't go anywhere like he was here in ravenswood for the past week i don't know why he would say that he wasn't here so as we know shady stuff olivia is she's holding ground she's insisting that he had nothing to do with this but Luke and Remy, they're not buying it. Miranda then goes and she watches Ray visit Rochelle um, when she's in prison. Um, and he basically talks about how she made high school bearable for him. 
and that because of that he wants to help her and it was kind of the first time that we saw any real emotion from Ray, which I thought was interesting. He came across really likeable in this scene. And this is why I was so like upset that we didn't get a second season because I think Ray and Rochelle was a storyline I was becoming really invested in, but we weren't getting a lot from it. Like it was very much slow burn. It wasn't one of the main plot lines. So we didn't get that much development in it but I was still becoming really invested in it, specifically with this scene. You actually talked to me? Didn't think I smelled like chemicals or made jokes about my clothes being covered with dead people dust. <laughs> <laughs> Having you there, Rita, I school bearable. And so Olivia goes to Ray and asks him to help her mom um, because she can kind of tell that he actually does care for her and also there's not really anyone else in the town that is willing to give them a chance and to actually like help bail her out or anything like that so caleb's trying to have a bit of a snoop around in the embalming room and the spirits obviously do not want him in there because they're breaking things trapping him in there like spilling chemicals and all this stuff um and it seems that they're either too maybe too scared of Ray for Caleb to find out what's going on or they feel a sort of sense of protecting him. So to get more information from Springer, Remy offers him um, an article in the Ravenswood Gazette that basically paints his dad in a better light because the reason, like I said, that he hates um, Olivia and her family is because her dad was the one that put him in jail, but Remy's dad also had obviously written about it and he has a lot of sway in the town's opinions through um, the newspaper so Remy decides that she, what she's going to do to get Springer on side is to kind of put out something that shows the other side of the story and obviously Springer um appreciates this and then in turn is willing to give her more information about dylan and what he knows but this does backfire on remy a little bit in terms of her dad because he is really angry when he sees that she went behind his back and post and, and printed it so he ends up firing her from the newspaper so if you remember i mentioned the chapel that mr price had talked about that ray never lets anyone go in and Caleb and Miranda decide to break in there and see what the hell is going on and she says that she's been in there a couple times because obviously she's like a spirit she can just go through but she's not really finding anything so she brings Caleb along huge spider where is it oh it's on your arm it's head for your shoulder can you get it what no I couldn't even get it if I was still alive it's gone mm -hmm. yeah and they see on the floor um, the six names of the original people that had signed the pact, right? That curses the town. So there's this list of names, but they don't actually really recognise any of them. They just recognise, obviously, Rivers from old Caleb's dad signing it. And also um, Sanders, which is Dylan, the boyfriend's last name. So it's kind of like, why isn't he involved in this pact then? And we see Luke confronting Dylan um, at school and Dylan basically comes clean and is like, he, um, the priest, was, you know, willing to make an exchange and he was happy to take Liv instead of Dylan. So now Liv is obviously caught in this curse. She's one of the five teens um, with everyone else, but she was never actually supposed to be. It was supposed to be Dylan. Um that was supposed to die with them and not live. Offer up somebody really wants. You just have to take your sister instead of me. And then he like just disappears. He literally disappears into the smoke and Luke gets like strangled by a spirit. Um, but he's fine, he lives. So Caleb goes back into the chapel and the spider lady is watching him and it's so, it's so like, I can't tell you anything about the spider lady. Like, I can't, because I feel like she was supposed to play a bigger role in season two, and so nothing, you never really know anything about her. We just see her a couple times, 
Um, but we don't really know where they were planning on going with that. Now, when he looks at the tile with all of the names on it, it's glowing red and there's spiders crawling like all over it. Um, and he's like, what the hell is going on in this place? There's another ghost that I didn't mention because he wasn't really that prevalent in the story. We'd seen him like twice, I think, up until this point, just briefly. Um, but now we're seeing him as more of like a bigger role and he has like bloody eyes or like his eyes are like all dark and like kind of almost like look a bit like they're like gouged out almost. They're like bleeding. Um, and Remy sees him and then she sees Ray and Dylan talking in the car. So she thinks that maybe um, this spirit is one of, you know, uh, the ones that was killed in the pact whenever. And he is kind of trying to show her what's going like try and help her figure out what's going on because she probably wouldn't have seen Ray and Dylan in the car if it hadn't been for him. So Ray actually ends up paying Rochelle's bail, which means that she's allowed to go home. And when Luke comes home and tries to tell Olivia uh, the truth about Dylan, she's just not having it. Um, and she still isn't believing him. And that's where we come to the end of episode nine. And honestly, when I was watching this, I was like, there's no way they can resolve all of this in one episode. And I knew I was going to be so mad that it got cancelled. So now we're moving on to the final ever episode of Ravenswood, episode 10, My Haunted Heart. And this got 1.39 million viewers. Um, so definitely one of the more viewed of the season. Um, but unfortunately, not enough overall to get it renewed for a second season. So Ray tells Gromwald that Dylan knows what he has to do and she questions whether he is capable of it. So even up until this last episode, you don't really know who are like the good guys and who are the bad guys. Um, and Remy says to the other, to the other five, the, the other four of the Rosewood, Ravenswood five. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, she says to the rest of the gang that she thinks that this boy is trying to help her because, yeah, like I mentioned, she wouldn't have seen Ray and Dylan together if it wasn't for him. So he maybe is part of this. And they end up finding um, an article, Him, uh, her and Luke end up finding an article um, with a picture of him showing that he was one of the five teens that died however many years ago. And Hannah shows up in this episode. So this is the episode with Hannah. Um, and I just, I adore her. And um, so she shows up um, and, you know, Caleb kind of introduces her to everyone. And obviously she asks where Miranda is. And she says, you know, that she's not like going to hurt her that much. But she obviously is kind of here to confront her about Loki stealing her boyfriend. Um, and, you know, she just wants to know where she is so that she can talk to her. And Caleb has to come clean that she died um, pretty much as soon as he got to Ravenswood. So I just wanted to jump in and say that in terms of Hannah, while she was away, um, like I said, Pretty Little Lies was airing at the same time as this. I actually had one mention of Caleb um, in the other show, and this is in Love Shack Baby, which I can't remember. I think it's a, the next episode after when he left, or maybe like two after. And she basically comes clean to the other liars and tells them that Caleb left her for someone else, obviously being Miranda. We know at this point that she still doesn't know that she's dead, right? It's kind of confusing in the Pretty Little Liars timeline to try and pinpoint when she went to Ravenswood because they never mention it. But obviously we know that she comes in this episode. So yeah, Love Shack Baby, she still thought Miranda was alive and that Caleb had left her for her. Then Close Encounters, uh, she actually ends up kissing Travis because also in Love Shack Baby, she and Travis had had like a sweet moment um, and then she ends up kissing him in Close Encounters, but they don't start dating. And then the next time we see Travis after that is after this episode of Ravenswood that has Hannah in it. So in the kind of Halo narrative, he has come back to Rosewood, has, you know, told her that he has to go basically like broken up with her which it wasn't very clear that it was a breakup by the way Caleb but he says that it was when he goes back to Ravenswood. Hannah 
has already met Travis, she already knew him before Caleb left, but they're getting closer, and she ends up kissing him, and then I think still wants to be with Caleb and that's why she then comes to Ravenswood in this episode and obviously we're going to talk about how they leave things in this episode but then she goes on to date Travis after this like after they kind of have proper closure so that's kind of how the relationship timeline is going because I feel like it can be a little bit confusing because in Prittle Lies they never address her going to Ravenswood it, it just looks like her and Caleb broke up she then moved on to Travis but in reality, in that time, she had gone to go and see Caleb again um, and then come back and decided to move on with Travis. And he says that he still sees Miranda and talks to her, but Hannah doesn't really know how to process this and basically like thinks that he's crazy and that something has happened to him while he was in this town to make him say all this stuff about like ghosts and still seeing Miranda even though she's dead. Just tell me where she is. I don't care, I won't hurt her. Much. Miranda's dead. So Grunwald tells Hannah to stay in Ravenswood and give Caleb more of a chance and hear him out. And Hannah thanks Grunwald for saving Alison's life, which was really sweet. I think it adds more to the kind of weird Grunwald and Hannah duo because we see them together in Grave New World but then specifically in uh, when we see Grunwald in season seven I think it is um she kind of only goes and speaks to Hannah and which might seem a little bit random in the main show but when you see here that she, her and Hannah had more of like a kind of bond and she was kind of more receptive to Grumwald and obviously Grumwald knew Caleb um and knew how Caleb felt about Hannah so that gives her that that kind of more connection in a way to Hannah than the other liars and I really liked this scene between them where yeah she thanked um Grumwald for saving Alison's life because I feel like you, you kind of forget that Grumwald is literally like the unsung hero of like she is the reason that Alison is still alive and no one ever really, you know, mentions that um, in the main show so much. So I thought it was kind of nice to see that scene between them. So Hannah meets Caleb in the park and she says that she sort of believes him, but it's also really confusing for her because she came to Ravenswood expecting to fight with Miranda and then to find out that she's dead and that she genuinely, when she met her in Grave New World, wanted to help her. And so you know now that now she's dead and it's just all very overwhelming and Caleb goes to speak to I think Remy or someone on the phone for a minute and when he comes back Hannah is gone and Max has kind of led her away to go and get ice cream and Caleb's like you you need to stay away from her like you cannot talk to her she's evil <laughs> and Hannah's kind of like what are you talking about and she tells Caleb that she has seen her before she saw her at the cemetery party in um you know when they went to that thing in Ravenswood so she's already met her before and we have this scene with Hannah um and Miranda but obviously she can't see her um and she just kind of talks um out loud maybe you know kind of hoping that if she, this everything Caleb is saying is true that um she would hear it and she says that she was so sure that Caleb was in love with Miranda when he came back to Rosewood because obviously she didn't know that she was dead at that point. Um, and she's kind of talking aloud to her, trying to understand the situation. And Miranda, you know, kind of talks back, but obviously Hannah can't hear her. Have you met any famous dead people yet? Cleopatra, Marilyn Monroe, anyone like that? So then Remy, Olivia and Luke go to um, their dad's office, to Luke and Olivia's office, dad's office, <laughs> my words all over the place today, um, and kind of hoping to maybe get some more answers or maybe, you know, the spirits could show them, because they kind of show Remy obviously moments from the past, if maybe that would, could happen again. Um, if they went to exactly where he died. So they go to the office. Oh, um, he's called Ryan, by the way. The spirit with the, with um, the eyes, he's called Ryan. 
and um, he comes with them and he shows them exactly how their dad died. And what happened was that Dylan, um, literally while being Olivia's boyfriend, literally came in and killed her dad. It was him. So he came in and he actually killed um, Olivia's dad with the packed knife because, you know, the one that the priest carries around because Olivia's dad was getting quite close to exposing this pact and figuring it out um, because he had, like I said, had actually dated um, Abby, was it Abby? Um, one of the ghosts we talked about in the previous episodes that had died at the high school. That was his high school girlfriend. So he was kind of, she was coming to visit him as a ghost and he was trying to figure it out. And obviously they didn't want this secret being exposed and so Dylan had to kill him to protect it. Luke, do something! I don't want to die. No! 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 <laughs> when he had done this, he had actually knocked over a book and picked it up and put it back on the shelf. And it was a honestly really heart-wrenching scene i like the acting in this show is genuinely really really good um i thought that the other four obviously tyler blackburn we know that he is good anyway but the other four really were really really good actors and um it was really heart-wrenching to watch luke and olivia watch their dad and how he died because olivia is kind of saying you know, telling Luke to stop it, but obviously it's just a memory and there's nothing that they can do about it now. And they tell the police to check the office again, um, because obviously they know now that if they check the office again and they look at the book shelf, they're going to find Dylan's fingerprints on the book that was there that he picked up um, at the crime scene. So you see Hannah call Emily, which was really cute, and she tells her, you know, that she's in Ravenswood and she tells her to tell Spencer um, and like let her know but not right yet because obviously she doesn't want Spencer coming down there while she's still kind of trying to figure everything out and um, she says that she'll probably be home uh, the next day. So Remy goes back to her house to tell her dad about this new evidence against Dylan because obviously then you know you can put in the paper and, and everything. Dylan is there waiting for her and he knocks her out and drags her away. So then we actually get a pretty big revelation in terms of Ray's character. So like I said, they were kind of trying to humanize him a bit more in that scene with Rochelle. But here Caleb kind of confronts him about the pact, you know, he's like, did you get Dylan to kill the mayor to try and cover this up? And he realizes that Ray did not know that Dylan was the one that had killed the mayor. He had no idea. And he says that the reason that Miranda's mum died was because she was also trying to break the pact because she knew that Miranda would be a victim. And so she wanted to protect her daughter and she wanted to end the pact, but it ultimately meant that she lost her life. And the reason that Ray didn't keep Miranda and sent her away was to try and protect her from this pact. He thought that if she lived somewhere else and didn't have any connection to him and the house or anything like that, that she would be safe. And it was really hard for him to do that. And he didn't want to, you know, lose contact with her, but he wanted to protect her. You sent Miranda away. And then when she came back, you tried to scare her off. You have no idea what that was like. My sister's child, the last living connection I had in this world. And I slammed the door in her face. And then she was gone. So they get a picture of the chapel from Remy's phone and go there to find her. And uh, Dylan ends up locking them all in. And the spider woman that I had mentioned, she shows up and then she turns in to the priest. Um, so he was the one that, I don't know why he was a spider woman, like, <laughs> it, that part I don't really get, but I guess, because he wasn't showing himself, like, he wasn't being the spider woman, like, to try and infiltrate their lives, like, he could have just been the priest, so, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what all that was about, but anyway, it's the priest, and, um, he, he, you know, says that death doesn't need to be permanent for Miranda and that he could potentially 
bring her back to life. So Dylan says, you know, look, I did everything that I was supposed to do. So we call and Max says, yes, she'll help him get away. And then he chases her into the woods and he falls on to the train tracks and is killed by a train, which was crazy. I was not expecting it at all. Like it was like Ravenswood is quite, to be fair, maybe not. It's quite gruesome compared to Pretty Little Lies, but not really the last few seasons of Pretty Little Lies, actually. Um, Because I feel like we got quite gruesome there towards the end, like with Sarah Harvey in the bath and the beheading of Noel Khan. But um, yeah, so that's how Dylan kind of meets his end. And then I don't know if maybe the priest had lied to him. It's not really explained why he ends up dying anyway. Um, And I don't know if maybe that then meant two out of three um if Liv was never actually supposed to die and by Dylan dying that is kind of the second um death out of the five that needed to be collected I'm not really sure so Ray runs into the chapel to stop the priest from bringing Miranda back to life like he almost does and I think even to the point that they're actually able to physically touch her. Um, but Ray comes in and stops it because he says the only reason that the priest is bringing Miranda back to life is so that he can kill them all at the same time. And Ray actually ends up breaking the old Caleb jar, um, which sets him free. So he is now free to kind of walk around um, and the priest runs away. The two of them together are more powerful than you are. So Caleb says goodbye to Hannah as she's leaving to go back to Rosewood and they kiss. Um, He asks if she believes him and she says that she doesn't really know what to believe. Um, That there's the smart option of what, you know, she could believe, but she doesn't think that it would make her as happy as Caleb does, which was really sweet. There's nobody like you in the entire world. And Hannah promises Caleb that she won't say anything to the others about Ravenswood. That's why you, it's kind of weird because you don't, when you watch the show, you wouldn't even know that she had gone to Ravenswood. They never mention her going there or anything like that. So it kind of then explains why she doesn't talk to the girls about it when she comes back. So after watching Hannah and Caleb's goodbye, Miranda goes and sits by herself, kind of, I guess, realizing that Caleb's heart belongs to Hannah and not her and then old Caleb um, comes and sits with her and it kind of looks like maybe she will then get to be with that version of him um, instead of kind of the Caleb that we have. And that is it. That is the final ever episode of Ravenswood. That's kind of the ending that we get. And like I said, I find it interesting because this could have been the final ever Hannah and Caleb scene, potentially, um, in Ravenswood. Whereas, like, the final ever Hannah and Caleb scene in Rosewood would have been that, like, in Pretty Little Eyes, would have been that awful scene between them that's really sad. So I did like they gave them more closure in this episode if that was going to be it um but yeah there was just so much left I feel like they had to explore um I feel like 10 episodes was a good amount I think if they'd been renewed in the next season had also been 10 episodes I think it was a good um amount of time it's like well paced um I didn't really find any of the episodes like boring or anything like that um, whereas I feel like with Pretty Little Liars and the 22 to 25 episode seasons, you do get more like filler episodes, which you don't get with this one, which I did like. Um, but yeah, so now let's move on to my kind of review of Ravenswood. Listen, 
you guys are no fun. Okay, you guys are no fun because Ravenswood slaps. Is it ridiculous? Yes, absolutely it is ridiculous. Of course it is, but it's fun. Okay, it's fun. Like, I feel like we deserve more episodes of this show. And people need to not hate on it so bad. I feel like at the time, if you were very invested in Pretty Little Liars and you didn't like that Caleb was leaving and you didn't watch it out of spite or, you know, you watched it but you didn't really care for it, I feel like go back and watch it. Because it, it actually is good. Like, I understand that it's not going to be what everyone is looking for from Pretty Little Liars. And I think that's absolutely fine because they do a really good job of keeping it very separate from the main show. Obviously outside of the backdoor pilot and having Grumwald appear a couple times. Which is so wild that it never really gets brought up again because Caleb literally almost dies and also hangs out with a ghost girl for weeks on end. And it, it's just never really brought up again. <laughs> Which is so wild, like, when you see him, like, in, I don't know, season seven when he's getting married to Hannah, he's carrying around the memories <laughs> of this ridiculous show, which is just so funny. Like I said, if you haven't seen it, genuinely do give it a go. It's only 10 episodes and the acting is really good. Um, and it's just like a bit more, you know, PLL content. I feel like it's been a long old time since we've seen anything Pretty Little Liars. Um, so it was kind of fun to be able to watch this having never seen it before. Like some of the jump scares genuinely did get me and I found the plot actually really engaging. And to be honest, going in, obviously I knew it was only 10 episodes. I had known that obviously Miranda was gonna be in it um, and um, Caleb and that was kind of it. I didn't really know anything else about it. So I wasn't expecting to care about the other characters so much i thought i would kind of just watch it see what caleb was up to do my little you know video on it um but i was really surprised i became really invested in all the characters um i thought that remy and luke and olivia were really good like well thought out characters and i really ended up liking miranda as well i think my only kind of complaint with it would be that there's a bit too much going on sometimes um, and I get that this would have been setting up for more seasons, um, and they could have explored that stuff a bit more, but there's, like, a lot going on, like, the, I feel like the main plot is kind of hard enough to wrap your mind around, like, the ghosts and the pact and the war veterans and, and all that stuff that's going on with, kind of, the Ravenswood Five without all of these weird side quests, um, like you have the Ray and Rochelle romance, which I did like and like I was enjoying where that was going to. But obviously when you only have the 10 episodes, it's like kind of a lot to um, fit in. And like you had Rochelle was obviously wanted for the murder of her husband. And Luke in the second episode or the third episode even tells Liv that he thinks his mum did it. Which is a, a crazy revelation. Like, that's a crazy thing to say that he actually thinks she did it. But then we don't hear about that for like four episodes. And he never brings up thinking that his mother was a literal murderer ever again. And then you have Luke um, kissing Tess for no reason. Um, that was weird. And then he doesn't do the play again. That was just for one episode that he was with Tess. And then Tess and Liv fighting. And then they do make up. And then... But that kind of also goes nowhere. Um... Then you also had the weird, like, beef with Springer. Like, in the first episode, Springer and Luke have this beef. And obviously, he's the one that throws um, the drink on Liv. But then, again, he disappears for loads of episodes until he comes back towards the end. So, yeah, I feel like I liked that there was so much, kind of, to go off of. But, like I said, if it had been this over a couple seasons, I think it would have been really great. But there's just stuff that you kind of forget about and... Then they bring it up later and you're like, oh yeah, I forgot that that was going on because I'm so consumed by like the main plot. I also really didn't like the Caleb and Miranda relationship. Um, I wish they'd kept it purely platonic. It just did not feel like something that Caleb would do to Hannah. It didn't feel true to his character. And yeah, it was just, it was just a bit weird. Um... Her ending up with old Caleb, fine. Like, I think had she had these feelings for him that had kind of carried over from obviously old Miranda and old Caleb and then she had been with old Caleb at the end 
absolutely fine. But the fact that Caleb started to almost like reciprocate those feelings is what I didn't like. And I honestly didn't watch this for the longest time because of kind of the reputation that it has. Um, I'd only heard bad things about it and um, it also wasn't on uh, Netflix. That was how I would watch Pretty Little Liars was through Netflix and it wasn't on there. So it was kind of hard to find, but now it's on the BBC iPlayer and you can just watch it. And um, yeah, I was kind of like, wow. Like, I think I would have really enjoyed it at the time had I just watched it. And I honestly believe that it was kind of misrepresented in a way. Um, I don't think the backdoor pilot did a very good job of showing what the show is actually going to be like, per se. Um, and I think it was really undervalued, guys. I Am I a Ravenswood stan? I think I might be. Maybe it's just like my rose-coloured glasses for Pretty Little Liars that I just love anything in the Pretty Little Liars universe. Um, but yeah, I liked it. I would give it like a solid overall like 7.5 out of 10. And I think the only, or maybe 8 out of 10, I think the only things that kind of bring it down, like I said, was the fact that we didn't get that many episodes, which isn't really its fault. And also um, the Caleb and Miranda relationship. Yeah, because I don't know. I feel like when you watch Grave New World none of it really carries over like at all um to the actual ravenswood show um in grave new world and the episodes where we do see ravenswood they make it feel very eerie and creepy which it kind of is but it's like they make all the people that live there seem very cult-like and um unfriendly but then when you actually watch ravenswood they're basically exactly like the people from rosewood like they're all just teenagers and like normal people also, the way they introduce the characters, like, they introduce Luke in Grave New World, but he's not Luke, like, at all. Like, he doesn't act anything like how Luke acts in the show. We also have the lady who's dressed as the bride, Leah, um, is supposed to be Luke's cousin in Grave New World, but she is not in Ravenswood at all. There is no mention of her. She doesn't show up once. Like, I think that's kind of why as well I never really was that interested in it, because from that, I never really got the urge to watch it. But... It's a lot better when you actually watch the show than it is kind of shown to be in that brief introduction to it. Oh, and also, like, the guy from the bus, he's not in it either. The guy from the bus is not in Ravenswood, even though they, like, found a picture of him. It, they kind of make it seem like Ravenswood is where everyone has died before, but that's not true. The only people that, have, that look like the people that died before is Miranda and Caleb like the bus guy he's not in it at all and he's not relevant and he kind of just confuses the whole plot now that i actually think about it because they found this picture of him being like oh my god he's actually dead but then why would he be on like why would he be on the bus and like she could actually touch like he was like sh i think she could actually interact with him so that wouldn't even make him a ghost so i don't really know i don't really know what that was about but anyway <laughs> um the show's better than the backdoor pilot makes it seem i think and i think a lot of people are harsh on it or didn't watch it because of what people said about it and i feel like if you've got the time give it a watch and then come back to this video and let me know what you thought so yeah, I was invested in it and the fact that it ended on a cliffhanger with so many unanswered questions and potential for different storylines and plot lines, it actually pains me. Um, but ultimately, as you could probably guess, it was cancelled due to low viewership and that meant that Caleb made his return to Pretty Little Liars in season 5. <laughs> Here is how you watch Ravenswood in the Pretty Little Liars timeline. So like I said, we have Grave New World, which is the 13th episode of season four. Then you have the first five episodes of Ravenswood, so one to five. Then you have Pretty Little Liars What's in the Box, which is the 14th episode of season four. Then you have Ravenswood episode six, Revival. Then you have Pretty Little Liars Love Shack Baby, which is the 15th episode of season four. Then you have Ravenswood Home is Where the Heart is. Seriously, check under the floorboards, which is episode seven. Then you have Pretty Little Liars Close Encounters, episode 16. Ravenswood I'll Sleep When I'm Dead, episode eight. 
Prill of Lies, Bite Your Tongue, episode 17 of season four. Ravenswood, Along Came a Spider, episode nine. Prill of Lies, Hot for Teacher, episode 18 of season four. And then we have the Ravenswood finale, My Haunted Heart, which is episode 10. And then after that, it's just Prill of Lies from the 19th episode of season four onwards. Hopefully that made sense. I feel like that came out all jumbled. <laughs> So now we're going to talk about when Caleb returned to Rosewood um, and kind of how they sum, you know, sum it up in the show. Because obviously for people that actually did watch Ravenswood, there, there wasn't a much of an ending. So it was really interesting because when I first watched this, when Caleb came back, obviously I hadn't seen Ravenswood, so I didn't really care what he was like. I didn't really understand what he was saying. But now going back and watching it, actually having seen the show, um, this was kind of the writer's only way to give the viewers of Ravenswood like a little bit of closure. Um, so we do get some questions answered about kind of what happens after the season one finale. So after the cancellation of Ravenswood, Caleb returns to Pretty Little Liars in season five, episode five, which is Miss Me times 100 in that kind of iconic scene where Hannah goes into the brew and he's in there and he's now got his short hair um, and he looks quite different to how we last saw him in Grave New World. He's also grown out his facial hair, which is a classic um, Pretty Little Liars tactic to show that a man is struggling. Um, anytime that Ezra's going through it, the man grows a beard. It's just, it's just what they do. So Hannah tries to talk to him and he ends up snapping at some teenagers and he disappears after he sees that Travis's name is on the coffee cup that Hannah is picking up. Um, and then later at a party with Travis, Hannah gets really drunk and tries to call him. Um, and she just gets too drunk and Travis ends up taking her home. So the next day Hannah goes and she finds Caleb drinking beer at the playground and he says that he didn't call her because Travis is a nice guy and he didn't want to ruin it by, you know, saying that he was back in Rosewood. Um, and Hannah asks if, you know, Miranda ever found her family and Caleb says he doesn't know that the night that she left Rosewood was the last time that he saw her. Did Miranda find her family? I don't know. The night you left Ravenswood was the last time I saw her. And I feel like this bit is a little bit confusing because when you watch it, it can kind of sound like one of two ways. The first way you can hear it is that he hasn't seen, like if you didn't watch Ravenswood, you would think, oh, he hasn't seen Miranda since Grave New World. But... Um, he doesn't say like when you was in the liars left Ravenswood he means in the series finale when Hannah actually came to Ravenswood that was the last time that he saw Miranda so when um, she goes and like sits on that bench we're kind of led to believe that after that she went off with old Caleb's ghost um, and Caleb never saw her again it is a bit confusing that Hannah asks if Miranda found her family um because it makes it seem like she didn't know that she had died and was a ghost. But I guess maybe Hannah's phrasing that in a way of like, oh, Miranda's ghost, because Caleb did tell her that he still is able to speak to her as a ghost. So yeah, the scene is a bit weird. It kind of conflicts with when we actually saw Hannah in the show. So they then leave to go to Emily's house, which is where they watch the announcement of obviously that Bethany Young was the person in Allison's grave and when Toby's house explodes. Caleb originally, you know, goes and stays with Toby while he's at the hospital and then goes to the brew where Hannah finds him. She says that things are different than before, you know, he left and he says that he can see that and she gets angry with him, kind of saying that she didn't know when or if he was ever going to come back. So it's not really fair you know, for him to be mad at her for moving on with Travis. And Caleb says that he isn't going to stay in Rosewood, that he's going to leave and he'll probably go to Montecito um, to see his mum. So then um, in a deleted scene, which if you want to see the Prillalize deleted scenes, I made a whole video on it where I went through every single 
deleted scene and just you know kind of talked about should they have kept it should they have not and you know what would it have added and all that stuff so that video is on my channel if you would like to go and watch that in a deleted scene from that same episode uh toby lets caleb stay in his granddad's old cabin while he's kind of just passing through um rosewood and caleb says that he thought that he could come back to rosewood and that everything would be the same but he isn't the same as when he left so hannah then goes to visit him at this cabin in the next episode run alley run um after falling out with emily over trying to help allison run away and she admits to caleb that she actually did want allison gone and she was doing it more for her own benefit than for allison's he kind of says that allison leaving won't change whatever it has stirred up in hannah and that he should know because when he left ravenswood what happened there is still with him just coming back to rosewood and pretending it didn't happen isn't helping and she asks him what happened in Ravenswood that it can't just be that he doesn't know where Miranda is like it must be more than that but he won't say and she's you know kind of says that she hopes that he'll stay in Rosewood and they end up drinking together so later on Caleb is supposed to take a high school exit test but he ends up ditching it um, and is day drinking which is starting to worry Hannah but then he's like really rude and snappy with her and she just asks him to leave. She then goes to her dinner um, with Allison at the Fields house and drinks too much and gets kicked out. So she goes to the brew where Caleb is sitting and she says that she wants to talk about them. She wants to, you know, see what what is going on between the two of them and he kind of maintains that he doesn't want to come between her and travis and she says look when you're here there isn't a me and travis like it's you always and she asks him what he wants and he says that he doesn't know because since being away he is a different person it's made him question a lot um and you know he doesn't see things the same anymore after the things that he's learned and hannah asks if he still sees her the same um and they end up kissing so then the next day um caleb is supposed to meet hannah for lunch at the school but he doesn't wake up on time so they're kind of in this like self-destructive little duo and because spencer is worried about hannah um she actually goes to see caleb hoping that maybe he would be able to talk to her but then she kind of realizes um that he is in that same place and when she brings up his drinking um he snaps at her and it upsets her and she ends up leaving so then we see more of that kind of self-destructive um cycle and then we get to the horrible episode where zach makes a pass at hannah and obviously she isn't believed by the other liars but kayla believes her and he goes to the brew and he punches zach and this is kind of a turning point for hannah and she decides that they need to change and she throws out all their junk food and all their alcohol and you know she makes them go on a run together and you know he shaved his facial hair so we think he's in a better place but then when hannah goes to see him later she finds out that he's still um been drinking and he says that he needs the alcohol to be able to sleep because as we know from ravenswood um caleb was having these really like intense dreams and that's the way that like the spirits and stuff can kind of visit you is through dreams so it kind of makes sense that with everything that happened in ravenswood if that's still toying with him that he wouldn't want to go to sleep and kind of open his mind up to that so hannah then asks spencer and toby to help her get through to caleb in a kind of like intervention style and toby asks why he's not sleeping and at first you know caleb's really defensive um but toby you know says look hannah's just worried about you and you know caleb says that loads of guys um you take the edge off to go to sleep but toby says that he needs to fight the actual issue rather than just you know trying to bury it he says that he's been to ravenswood and he understands but this just kind of sets caleb off because he's like no you were just a tourist like i actually lived there you can't compare visiting for the day to what i went through and toby tells him to you know say out loud what he's scared of but Caleb won't and he gets angry and he storms out so he goes back to the cabin to pack a bag and leave town um and he kind of insists to Hannah that he can take care of himself but she says that he can't so Caleb finally explains to Hannah what happened in Ravenswood and we don't hear all of it we just kind of hear the tail end of it and he talks about the pact right five teenagers for the soldier 
and he says that they actually found a loophole in it but doesn't really explain what that was and he says that they took all of the jars um so all of the teenagers that died and obviously ray was keeping the jars of them they took them all to the bridge where the accident that killed miranda happened um, and they opened all of them to release all of the spirits. And he says that at first nothing happened, but then um, the woods were filled with millions of fireflies and they drifted up into the trees and then they were gone. So that was kind of symbolizing letting all of those spirits free. Um, and I guess maybe part of the pact was that they had to stay there. And now that all of the spirits are free, the pact is now broken maybe it's not really explained the exact logistics of it and he says that mrs grumwald calls it a uh, great ascendancy and he says that after that it was gone no demons no messages no revenge um but also no miranda and that she was also gone and hannah you know she says to him look you kept your promise and you saved her but he isn't convinced that he did um, and he says that, you know, Ouija boards are real and that they've all turned them into a toy um, because they were afraid of it and that there's a whole other world, you know, just outside of the corner of their eyes and he's seen it. And now that he's seen it, how is he kind of supposed to forget about it and have a normal life? And he says that while he can sleep, he's scared too because that's the first time, the first time that Miranda ever spoke to him was in a dream. And he's scared that she's going to show up in his dreams again um, to say that he was wrong and that she isn't okay and that it's all his fault. Um, and Hannah kind of promises that they'll get through it together. First time that Miranda talked to me was in a dream. And I'm just afraid that she's going to show up again and she's going to she's going to tell me that I was all wrong and that she's not OK. And that it's my fault. Which is kind of interesting. I feel like they make Caleb seem really like tortured and traumatized when he comes back from Ravenswood, which makes sense. But that's not really how he acts in the show. Um, he's kind of like his normal self in the show. So they make it seem like a lot more happened because, yeah, like at the end, they were kind of starting to figure it out. And Remy, I think, out of everyone would be the one that would be the most traumatized by it. And I think it's weird that, yeah, after this, Caleb's back to normal and we don't hear about Ravenswood ever again. No one ever visits there again. Um, Caleb never talks about it again. Like he created quite a deep bond with Luke, Remy and Liv but again never speaks about them again. The fact that his dad owns this house in Ravenswood is never brought up again um, and Miranda's never brought up again which I thought was weird like I thought maybe they could have intertwined it still like had maybe said that he was going to go back to Ravenswood and visit them or oh I was just on the phone with you know like Remy or whatever or um, yeah I don't know or that maybe he would have said that Miranda had, like, where she had gone. Um, but I think it also kind of does make sense in a way because she was so upset with the fact that Caleb didn't love her. That for her to just accept that he loved Hannah and to just go with old Caleb and go wherever they were going to go without saying goodbye kind of makes sense, I suppose. Um... But yeah, the only link to Ravenswood that we see after this is Mrs. Grumwald. Hannah invites her back in season five um, to help her find Mona's body. And then we see her again in season seven when she comes to warn Hannah um, that she kind of had a feeling of a sense of darkness around her and Caleb. Um, and that's it. We don't see, yeah, like I said, we don't see Ravenswood again. We don't hear about it again. <laughs> I asked you guys on Reddit, I said, did you like Ravenswood? And I put up a poll and I put the options as, yes, I enjoyed it, absolutely not. I didn't watch it or didn't finish it slash didn't like or dislike it. About 15% or so of you guys said either yes, I enjoyed it or absolutely not. Um, and then about 13, 14% said didn't finish it or didn't like it. And the overwhelming majority um yeah about like 56 i don't know i think my math is off there but something like that um of you said that you didn't watch it so let me just go through a couple um 
comments. One person said, I mean, I did hate it, but Luke Benwood was good eye candy. Someone else said, I liked Remy's character, but I always felt like Caleb just tagged along and Miranda wasn't the most likable person. I don't think they should have used the supernatural aspect. I prefer the weird, mysterious Rosewood from PLL rather than overtly supernatural. Keep it unexplained and grounded, in other words. I agree. I think I really loved Remy's character. Um, but yeah, Caleb kind of didn't really fit in with them because they kind of didn't know him. It was only really because of this pact. Whereas, like I said, I think had this been separate characters or Caleb had just been there to kind of bring Pretty Little Liars over and then he had gone back and it had focused on the other characters, I think that would have made it more successful. And yeah, I think for me, I think the supernatural element works in Ravenswood. Um, I think it's absolutely fine. I think, yeah, had Caleb kind of been like, I don't know what's going on here and he'd left and the supernatural stuff would have carried on with characters outside of Pretty Little Liars, it would have been fine because it would have been just like contained to the show more. Um, because yeah, I kind of agree. I don't really need supernatural stuff in Pretty Little Liars, but having the kind of vibe of Pretty Little Liars, like the writers and all that stuff, but with a supernatural element in a separate show, I actually do like the idea of that. Uh, someone else said, not only is it that I did not like it, I hated it. I love horror, um, but Ravenswood is an insult to the horror genre. Ravenswood is nothing but a salad of horror movie cliches um, with many subgenres, but not that much to each one. Um, and in between one cliche to another, you can find some corny dialogue or a jump scare. People, <laughs> people really, really do not like this show. Um, okay, we'll do one more. Um, I would have been way more open to watching it if it wasn't about Caleb. Caleb, the arguably best boyfriend of the Pretty Little Liars and a fan favourite on his own, a part of one of the strongest couples from the show, and an extremely useful asset to the Liars in stopping A with his tech background, and they just write him out that he leaves Hannah to help a girl he just met on a bus. Season Caleb 1 would never, he'd have just minded his own business. I really like that this gets a lot of mixed, oh no, I feel like this gets a lot of mixed reviews, but I personally really enjoyed the episodes of PLL where they were in Ravenswood, it was mysterious and eerie, and it brought a new vibe to the show. I don't know where that cut off, but basically this person is saying that um, Caleb wasn't the right choice, and I think I agree. I think Tyler Blackburn is very talented, and I think it's not that he didn't deserve his own show, but I think that kind of set it up to fail, as it would have done if they'd chosen Toby, you know? Like, he works well in the show that he's in and is also a big fan favourite, so splitting them up to set up this show kind of already put them off on a bad foot with fans, I think. Um, and I think if they had chosen a character, yeah, that would have been easier to lift out, like maybe Jenna, um, or something like that, or Shauna, um, you know, if they just needed that tie to Pretty Little Lies, I think choosing someone that wasn't as integral to the story would have been better. Um, oh yeah, like I said, if Caleb had just gone for a few episodes and then left, um, because I think Remy, Luke, um, Liv, and Miranda, and then you have Ray and all that stuff, I think they were strong enough to hold the show on their own. And um, this person said, I would have been content with two options. One, they did a Ravenswood spin-off, but with entirely new characters. Entirely not anyone from the Pretty Little Liars cast, um, but of course still existing in the same universe, and especially not Caleb. And they also could have mentioned Rosewood and stuff too. I agree, I think that definitely was more the way to go with it. Or two, they kept Ravenswood entirely mysterious, and eerie, nice change of scenery in the show the way that it was. Um, those little clips and episodes were more than enough for me. Sometimes too much of it makes you bored. So they're saying just keep it as somewhere that the liars go and visit. Um, which I think also would have been fun. I always liked when they did, like when they went to Philadelphia or they went to Brookhaven. So yeah, I think that could have been kind of fun as well. <laughs> So honestly, I thought Ravenswood had a lot of potential. Um, I really liked it and I wish that they'd been able to have at least another season. I think maybe three seasons would have kind of been 
perfect. Like 30 episodes, three seasons of 10, um, I thought would have been really good. Because it kind of felt like they were just getting started. They were kind of planting the seeds for all these different storylines that would be able to flourish as they got more episodes. And I'm glad they did at least give us some kind of ending and resolution through Caleb telling Hannah about it in Pretty Little Liars. Like, um, I, but I do think it's still a shame. But yeah, I think them opening all the jars and setting the spirits free was a good ending. And yeah, like I said, since Miranda, you know, since Caleb said he hadn't seen Miranda since Hannah left Ravenswood, what I kind of take from that is that after watching them say goodbye, she kind of gave up on the idea of having him and was willing to just go with old Caleb. And as well, because he was also in the spirit world, they could actually touch and she could kind of actually be with him in a way that her and Caleb wouldn't be able to. I also really hope that Ray and Rochelle got together because I was kind of rooting for that um, across this season. And yeah, I just think it would have been interesting to see how Ravenswood being renewed would have impacted Hannah's story in Pretty Little Liars, like if she would have been with Travis for a lot longer, if they would have been endgame, if Caleb not being there would have sent her down like a completely different path, or if he would have eventually come back whenever Ravenswood ended. Um, I assume Caleb would have always returned at some point, but who knows, maybe he wouldn't have, maybe she would have, they would have given her someone else, maybe they would have followed her romance in the books more, which would have been interesting, because Caleb doesn't exist in the books, so him existing in the show kind of strays her from her character's path in the books. I think the one thing that bothers me about Ravenswood is how it affects how I see Caleb's character. I think obviously Spalum and all that stuff really changed how I saw his character. But this also did a little bit because I think it's hard to believe that he would just leave Hannah um, to go to Ravenswood and then let alone like once he got there start to have feelings for someone else. And also I found it really hard to believe that you know, Hannah goes through so much in the last parts of season four and the first parts of season five that hearing that, you know, Ashley had gone to jail, like she was being framed for that she was going to jail. Um, and the, because obviously Travis was the one that um, was, was able to let um, Ashley go from prison. So the fact that, yeah, Ashley was in jail and Allison came back from the dead and all this stuff that he wouldn't have come back to see her or called to see how she was or anything. Um, I feel like it was kind of an oversight by the writers, even if they didn't have Tyler Blackburn show up. I think, yeah, for him to at least have called or something, for him to not have done that, yeah, kind of takes away from his character a little bit. And yeah, I think if you miss PLL and you want to watch something a little bit spooky, um, and just a bit fun, then I think you should give Ravenswood a go. I think it was cut short before it really got the time to kind of find its footing. But yeah, that is it for today's video. That is it for my deep dive on Ravenswood, the town, the show, its presence, absolutely everything. Let me know what you thought of Ravenswood down below and um if you haven't watched it watch it come back tell me what you thought um if you want to see my video on maybe how i would have written ravenswood if they would have kept it going and how that would have changed um hannah's story in pretty little lies then let me know and yeah i will see you guys in my next video